evening. We are coming to you live from uh, my studio, as usual, and playing more Paper Mario Origami King. Um, well, the Origami King, I suppose. They intentionally made that the smaller, though, so I feel like Origami King also counts. Uh, Andrew might pop in later. Who knows? Who knows what he does? Whoop. I locked my chair in. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Let me make sure I'm framed up correctly. Alright. And then... Let me uh, actually turn on the monitor until Andrew gets here. Because I like to be able to hear the music. All right, press any button. Oh, that's right, we have to go read all the different texts in the the, the hotel, the shroom inn or whatever it is. Uh, it's tedium, but yeah, it's an RPG. They gotta have a little bit of that. So let's go. Might, uh, this might be kind of a chill s stream, mostly focused on gameplay, because uh, I am really, really tired today. I don't know what it is. I actually had like an energy drink. Well, energy drink. I had a surge, which is uh, kind of an energy drink. Eh, it just tastes like Mountain Dew, to be honest. It was nice. Spent a lot of time playing board games and stuff, so been a pretty chill, relaxed Saturday. Um, maybe I should actually message Andrew. I just kind of started it without saying anything, which is not a crime, but isn't great in the terms of, uh, making sure people actually show up for the thing. You know how that goes. Uh, let me actually... Make sure that that is a good position. That's a little better. More of a down mic situation. Uh, after I get through all of these, I will, I will message him to see what's up. I don't know. You guys like hearing from him? He tends to do a lot of the talking. It's mainly just so that I can, uh, focus on the gameplay. But, that's just how it is, you know. It's a little, a little less stress on me. A little more entertainment for y'all. Presumably. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me message him. In the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy some of this music, you know? Chillin'. Oh, we already read that bit. Not read that bit yet. Then there's that as well. Alright. And then two more? Yes. And then one more. I guess there might be something in that room. Ah, oh, dang. How do we get in the room? Sweet senior thesis. Ah, oh, that's a good turn of phrase. Hmm. Luigi. Oh, here's Andrew. Hold on now. Hello, one second. I gotta adjust a couple things to bring you on. Turn that off, turn that on. Okay. It is prepared for you. Hello, Andrew. Yeah, hello. Hold on, let me check. Let me check my settings. Everything's good on my end, so it is up to him. Uh, 
All right, and um. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Sorry. No, it's fine. I don't know what's up with Discord lately. There have apparently been like some outages to Discord lately, which is a little concerning. All right, I just read all the things and it told me to find Luigi, which I saw Coco do this part, so I'm just gonna head on over there and do it. Maddie had to borrow the equipment earlier, so that's why it was. Mm, okay. I had to rearrange it all. Yeah, no problem. Like, you don't have to feel any pressure to necessarily meet my schedule and stuff. You're welcome to be on here, and you are certainly enjoyed, but, uh,. You don't have to stress over it. Now, this one... Uh, what was it? This one? That's the right one? Yes? Yes? That might be for the second round. Hmm? Yes? No. Okay, the second round, that's the answer. Come on now. And you won't get it right the first round at all. No? Okay. Coco had to look up, like, a walkthrough after trying it a few times. Which, I guess, yeah, the... That one is... Uh, no? Maybe the third round, I guess? Hmm. Hmm. I'm just gonna keep going for this one. Yeah. Or I guess after the three chances, when he lets you know that you're going to be enslaved in the lamp. Yeah, that's the second round. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, is the audio already out on the Elgato? Come on. Ugh. Hold on. got to reboot the Elgato once again. It might be because it's through this hub. But I don't have any more open slots on the uh, on the MacBook itself to do it, so... Hmm. Oh, oh, there it is. The RTO has returned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A thousand coins. That's chump change. I find that under my sofa every day. There it is. There it is. Come on. Don't you mess with me on this one. I know this is the answer. Yes. Hello. I did it. A trick. I beat him in his own game. Whoa. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You are so cool, Iggy. I'm a professional gamer. Look, look at my high score on Fortnite. Is that... I can't put into words just how cool I think you are and how lucky I am to be your friend because of that. I got the victory royale with cheese. Man, like, compared to all others, mm. you are a god. They are slime. It's Luigi, hey. You got the key. That's not the right key. <sighs> oh, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. So how has your day been? Anything eventful happen? Not a goddamn thing. Yeah, same. It's been a really kind of sleepy Saturday for all of us here. We played a couple board games. Played a little Mario Party, a little Mario Kart. And then uh now now I'm playing Paper Mario for the Trifecta. There is some interesting wrestling news if you're interested in that though. Oh, of course. What do you got? Cody Rhodes on whether he's a heel or babyface. That's a good question. He kinda plays both sides. I'm neither. I'm a competitor and reigning champion. Mm. Tired tropes are even more insulting to the viewer considering I've been on their TV since I was 20. 
They black and white, it hasn't been in forever. Circumstances of the match dictate who we cheer for. Beautiful thing. What, how do you feel about this Shades of Grey character style? I appreciate it, honestly. Because, like, yeah, well, well, it can be nice to just have a clear-cut, like, good guy, bad guy scenario. It's like, it's also, it is also very entertaining to see somebody who can, who can play either side and still, like he said, like, have you cheering for him or booing him depending on the situation. The true performer is the one who can get the reaction that they want out of you, whether it's positive or negative. That... So I am... I have an opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Which is, it depends on the story you're telling. Mm. Right. If your story is that... Uh... You know... If the story dictates that someone clearly has to be the good guy, and someone clearly has to be the bad guy from beginning to end, and you're arguing, well, no, we're shades of gray, that doesn't work. Well, I would yeah. make the argument that, like, while yes, that is true, it's like, well, why are we telling that story? Is that really a story worth telling anymore when we've seen it so many times over and over again? Well, I'm referring specifically to the WWE argument of why they never turned John Cena heel, which was, well, the fans were booing him, therefore he was the heel. Mm. But it's, uh, I don't agree with that, because if the story you're tr clearly telling is that of a hero conquering the bad guys who are out doing the heel tactics, and you're arguing that they're the good guys, despite the fact they're doing the bad things, mm -hmm. then no. You didn't book him as a heel, you booked him as a face. The fact that fans rejected it is an altogether different matter. Well, I would say that the... I, I feel like morality is kind of a strong word here, but like, what is considered heel and face moves is kind of fluid. Like... De depending on how you frame it, stuff that Stone Cold did could have been considered heel in the he right context. He was an anti-hero. Exactly. That's very... what I'm saying, exactly. It's like, uh, that is a Shade of Grey kind of character. It's a character who does the right things for not necessarily the right reasons. It's... Well, no. For a lot of fans, what it was was, you know... If you're a kid watching, you're like, man, I wish I could do that to my principal or my teacher. If you're an adult watching, you're like, man, I wish I could do that to my boss. Because it was always the blue-collar working man storyline. Right. Um, I would say that if, in the case of somebody like Cody, where he does not have a storyline going right now other than he's defending the title, then yes, Shades of Grey is fine. In a case where you definitely have a story going one way or the other, then you don't get to play that Shades of Grey because if you're telling a story, there is a protagonist and an antagonist. You don't get to play Shades of Grey that, oh, well, actually, they're both equally... Like, no, no, no. Someone is clearly in the wrong in any situation well you, you, you say that but then like show. let's let's look at the the beef between kenny omega and ftr sure it's silly but it's like there's a very clear like shades of gray being played there and even kenny himself like his gimmick so far in AEW has been riding the line between face and heel i would disagree I would say he's very much been a face and has been teasing a heel turn. Hmm. Um. But, especially with the match against uh, Dresk Express this week, where he attacked Marco post match. And on BTE, where they've been saying uh, he's, you know, the cleaner is coming back, etc. Um. They're very much teasing a heel turn for what has been a very white meat baby face run so far. Hmm, right. 
Um, do you want some very interesting news? Sure. AEW defeated Raw and SmackDown. Are the numbers the official now? This, in the key demographic the this key. week. Key. Okay. So. They almost always defeat NXT in the 1849 demographic. However, this week's episode of Dynamite on TNT defeated both Raw and uh, SmackDown from the previous week in the key demographic. This is the first week in AEW history where AEW has won a key, as in 18 to 49 demo overall beating Raw and SmackDown in the same week with women 18 to 34. And that's a show with competition versus two shows with long histories and no competition. So mm -hmm. AEW, less than a year old, with competition on the same night, still beat two over 20-year-old shows that had no competition on the same night. Yep. This is pretty impressive given the fact AEW has only been running TV for less than a year. Uh, for comparison, Raw and SmackDown, again, uh, they just repeat what I said. Um, yeah, so... It's not any kind of shock. It's, you just, it, they did the most basic formula you could. You get the best talent, you put them together, you book them well, you promote it well, get the right funding. It's, it's dead simple, really. Like... The, the idea that they wouldn't succeed would be a lot more shocking to me. Well, you look at something like Ring of Honor, where they have, those, in a lot of cases, the exact same talent, uh, especially insofar as the Elite and Trent and Chuck E.T. Um, a lot of, like, that's why Ring of Honor is so pissed with them, is because they poached so much of their talent. And they're, they were their top draws. I uh, I feel like with that, the, the difference is that Ring of Honor does not market as well. Exactly. It's They've got Sinclair Broadcasting behind them. Mm. Plenty of money, and yet they do nothing to promote. Like, unless you're just an indie fan. And let's be real, Ring of Honor is an indie show. Oh, Period. certainly. Despite the fact that it's arguably on TV, despite the fact that it's you know, got all this money behind it, fucking Impact is doing more than Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. Despite not having the better product. Arguably. Yeah, Ring of Honor is like just one step above indie. It's the prosumer of wrestling promotions where it's it's technically being broadcast, but it still has all of the same indie flavor and... Uh, Notoriety. It's where your favorite wrestlers wanted to wrestle, but not because they knew they'd get a payday, but because they knew that they'd be able to do the kind of wrestling they want to do. Right. It has it has the reputation among wrestlers and wrestling fans um, of, like, quality, but it's like it doesn't really spread past that, whereas AEW has done a great job of uh, appealing to a lot of people who either um, are not necessarily into wrestling or were into wrestling but have just been really disappointed in how homogenized it's gotten as far as, like, WWE goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Mick Foley says uh, Big E has the potential to be one of the best ever. He's not wrong. Yeah. Um, Leo Rush is kind of pissed that after, like, a couple of months on the roster, and then immediately left the roster, Rob Gronkowski, the Gronk, got an action figure. <laughs> whereas Leo Rush was with the company for three years and never got a figure. Yikes. Um, I can understand his frustration and agitation. However, Leo Rush did not have the same run. That's not his fault, and it's not Rob Gronkowski's fault. 
Rob Gronkowski came in as a celebrity already and was immediately pushed directly to the top of the card because he was famous. Mm -hmm. And so I get it. He had a better run because he was previously famous. Yeah. But to be mad that, you know, Leo Rush pissed off a lot of people pretty much every step of the fucking way that he was in WWE. Um, see, this one pisses me off. The thing you're on right now. Oh, yeah. Because if you fall into the fire twice, it lays it out like you're a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. I mean, Coco, like, uh, when they were doing this was just like... Uh, saw that it did that the second time it was like let's see how far it goes and it yeah after like yeah, it four drops it all just the, like other ones wait like, and you have to do it one more time somewhere else I think later mm -hmm. and god it just holds your hand like that's when I asked you how do you feel about puzzles and you're like three times it's not enough like you gotta screw up five times before it does that enough after you've screwed up twice it will hold your hand it just irritated me. Honestly, like, it, so it, much. it honestly just seems funny to me. Because it... it at, a cer at a certain point, it's like almost mocking you. And I find that kind of funny. But like, that's what you do for an audience like... 3 to 12. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the meta of... It's not necessarily that they think... I don't know it, but like they're just like they're just like, come on, dummy, you know this. Like I, I I'm thinking more of the meta of like, okay, fine, here you go. See, I don't see that. I see it as like straight up mocking like either it's for adults with these difficult boss battles, or when you couple that with the like, the, the puzzle thing with the, um, fucking tutorial beginning. Mm. Like, who the fuck is your audience? Is it young children or adults? Because you don't seem to fucking know. And that's the biggest problem the, I have yeah, with this Yeah, they're, like, they're trying to have it both ways, but they don't get that their methods to do so are incredibly oh. incongruous. Like, they just don't work together. You can't... You can't have j take something and just make it as hard as you want, and then be like, <coughs> "Okay, we'll just then we'll just hold their hand the whole way." And it's like, n no, though, that's not how that works. And that's what like, and that's why I said this game is manic depressive, because there's parts you really love, and then that happens. You're just like, "Fuck this game." You all right there, Iggy? Yeah, I'm fine. You don't seem to be doing anything. I'm waiting. But running I'm, around. I'm trying to trick him into going into the fire. I already took out like a third of them. Uh, on my screen? No, you haven't. You. You have to hit them when they drop their buckets. Not all of them. I've I have taken out a good chunk already. Just by dodging them. I've seen you take out one. Well, okay. I mean, anyway. I, I get it. I get what I need to do. Yeah. Um. Oof. So yeah. Um. Yeah. AEW had some really good ratings. Um. I mean, yeah. What's new? Have you? Were you ever a fan of Big Bang Theory? No, I, I absolutely despise it. Yeah. So, I had a roommate that really liked it. And I was Why? like, okay. And she had like the DVD box sets of the like first few seasons. And I would sit and watch it as she played them, so I don't know at what point, because I only saw like five episodes. So I don't know what season this was from or what have you, but I just remember, you, you remember Body Works, the exhibit where they took corpses and bombed them in athletic poses, and then, yeah, uh, yeah, 
So, one of the characters goes to see that, comes back to tell his friends about it, and his response to how was it was, some of those girls were hot, and I'm like, no, fucking no. Yeah, there was actually, no. um, somebody made a video essay, I believe it was Pop Culture Detective, uh, on YouTube, where he, ex like, explained that, like, it's a, such a common thing, um, in a lot of stuff where it's like, uh, uh, what is it, uh, nerdy misogyny of just like, it's incredibly anti-woman and sexist, but because they're non-threatening, technically, it's considered okay by the public, and it's like, this isn't cool, guys, at all. Like, there's so much stuff like that in there, where they're just incredibly, like, um... Just sexist, full on, full on sexist. Uh, sometimes just racist, and it's supposed to be hilarious slash cute because they're they're nerds. They can't do anything about it. It's like I, I, it's it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, that show really fucking grossed me out. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Is like a lot of people get mad at it for the like, oh, it's like blackface for nerds, and it's like no. I mean, well, yes basically like it's such a like obvious like oh this is what nerds are like as far as this tv executive thinks but um yeah. regardless like that doesn't bug me nearly as much as them just being despicable characters they're so disgusting yeah yeah, uh, yeah. you know what gets me about the protests right now is Reporters are absolutely getting gassed and abused and beaten. Mm -hmm. And then the networks are just like, Gee, sir, those boots taste so delicious. Can I lick them again? Like, fucking. Yeah, back your up your people. Getting... Yeah. Like, y'all are getting abused out here, and your fucking response is, Yippee, can I have another? Like, you guys like... can keep doing that, but guess what? The money's gonna start drying up once you have to be propaganda for the state. Like, Which is the next step after this, if they didn't already get it. Like, as journalists, they should be pretty aware of what the next step in this fascist cycle is. I mean... Hell, what have they... What has the government or anybody done for them lately anyways? Like, the establishment absolutely despises the press right now, so why are they helping them in the slightest? How does that help them at all? <laughs> <clears throat> so, Jesus Christ, did you see the thing about uh, how to tell a venomous versus non-venomous snake bite from the bite marks? Uh, yeah, I did see that. So someone just, re you know, said, I love how the non-venomous danger noodle is smiling while the venomous danger noodle has angry eyebrows. And caught just the most transphobic tirade. Oh. From someone for it. Like, holy shit. What? What is that? What? W wait, what? Where's the connection? I don't. What is going on here? I will send it to you on uh, Twitter. No, I'd rather not. I don't like. Well, Surprisingly, I don't like to see people being transphobic. But, like. I'd prefer I, just, no like, a connection. summary. If you're. There's no, like. No connection. Like, their tweet, like, they just went looking for a trans person to insult. It's, it looks copy-pasted. Like, yeah. it straight up looks like they just go to a bunch of different people's Twitter feeds and put that over the, uh, you know, just copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's not like they care about being original in any way. They're bigots. They're idiots. Just a, just a reminder, folks, uh, bigotry of any form is pure irrationality, which means that it involves no thought, which means that it's pure idiocy. So, you know, you can th think about that, you racists, you transphobes, you homophobes, all you. you Here's a headline hmm? that will just make you hate Musk even more. I, d I really don't need any more. <laughs> to, to hate well, him. Well, it's a, it's a good headline, like, you'll hate him, but you'll be proud of what the Bolivian people are doing.
Oh good, are they not putting up with this garbage? The Bolivian people are organizing to take back control of the lithium that the U.S.-imposed regime is trying to give to Elon Musk. Ugh, stop that. I just, it's, it's disgusting. There was a video we were watching, um, the other day by Thought Slime, who makes great, great videos. If y'all don't watch, definitely watch his stuff, but he was talking about how there's all this nonsense from the right wing about, like, oh, the New World Order, all this, all this chaos, it, globalists, globalists want you to, to be put down, and they don't want to... They want to make sure that you can't get a good job, or this or that, and they want immigrants to come in and steal your jobs, and it's like, he pointed out, it's like, no, all of the things you're describing are things that are wrought entirely from capitalism. Pretty much yeah. all of it. In fact, globalism very much helps capitalism, so I don't, yeah, like, why is the right wing so anti-globalist? Is it because it allows brown people to come into their country? I feel like it's um, just that. I feel like it's just racism. It is, but you're you've got the wrong group. Hmm. Globalism is a dog whistle for uh it, it's an anti Semitic thing. Yeah, I mean that's that's part of it as well. The uh, the World Bank as they said. Yeah. And all that, and it's like yeah. But uh so history of Armani tweeted at Elon Musk. You know what wasn't in the best interest of people? The U.S. government organizing a coup against Evo Morales in Bolivia so you could obtain the lithium there. To which Elon Musk replied, we'll coup with, or we'll coup whoever we want. Deal with it. Wow, Wait. you get that that's not at all okay, right? And imagine Elon? being a fucking Elon stand still. Like, there are people out there like, Jesus Christ. I don't know why anybody point. is cool with him. It's like, yeah, he's doing some progressive things with like, oh, but electric car, oh, trying to go to Mars, but it's like he doesn't... Because he wants money. It's not like, even because he's... he wants money. It's because he wants to look like a sci-fi superhero. He wants people to love him and respect him the way they do, like Tony Stark. It's like, it's not gonna happen, Elon. You're a loser who has to get other brilliant people to do work for you and then you just take all of the credit and money for it yeah it's it's and like that's you're the a thing garbage about, person that's the thing about the tony stark character it's impossible like in order to become tony stark you have to be a um, millionaire billionaire well no you have to be whatever. a robotics genius like that's that, the, that's the thing that's missing have... is that People, he well, wants people to think money. that he's a, he is more than just a businessman. But that's it. That's all Elon Musk is. Like he's a businessman who has his sights on businesses that are more progressive. But it's like, it's not gonna do anything. He can't do anything himself. Tony Stark, at the very least, could build an Iron Man suit and was obsessed with doing so. Like he actually is a genius as far as his character is described. Whereas Elon is just. A jerk who made PayPal and then exploited a bunch of people to make more money. But like, beyond that though, you don't become Iron Man on like minimum wage. It's never gonna happen. No. Even if you're a brilliant, like, you got too many people who've had, you know, who were brilliant engineers and whatnot that had their shit stolen from them. Uh, you could look at. The inventor of the light bulb. Or Dude. not even stolen from them, like, actively just, like, made the technology, actively made it, and then, uh, oh, here comes Apple to make a more user-friendly version and with just way better distribution, marketing everything, so they get all the credit when you created the thing. That's what happened with or MP3 players, cooler. that's what happened with... That's what happened with tablets, like, all of these things existed Laptops. already. Yeah. yeah, but then... Apple, Apple came in and they're like, sleek white we, version. we can make it marketable. And more expensive. Yeah. And not as functional. But, I mean, it happened with the guy who invented the light bulb. Who invented the light bulb, Iggy? Not Edison, that's all I know. Correct. The real creator took his invention to Edison and said, hey, you interested? And Edison was like, nah, I'm good. There's no future in the light bulb. 
then when the guy died, Edison went to his widow. Was like, no one else is going to be interested in this light bulb. I'll buy it from you for a pittance. It's more than it's worth. And then the minute she said, okay, I guess, he went and made bank off of it because he was a dick. Edison sucked in general. Yeah, but it's a, thing, he, like, it, he and Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, they all had similar things in common, which is that they themselves were just businessmen who knew how to market inventions. They themselves knew very little about the thing that they were actually selling. And, like, that's the problem. Like, in order to become an Iron Man, you have to be altruistic. Mm -hmm. And no billionaire... None of them are. That's, that's the real fictional thing about Tony Stark. Nothing Like, the Iron Man suit, all that, that's reasonable. The idea that there is an altruistic, benevolent billionaire is the, the true fiction. The, the truth of Iron Man would be that the minute he developed that suit, he is mass-producing them and selling them to every military in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the the bizarre thing to me is when the second movie starts and it shows all the other militaries trying to develop Iron Man suits. It's like, sincerely, you're going to tell me that just because this guy had a traumatic experience once, he just completely changed his tune? No, yeah. that's just not how capitalism works. It corrupts yeah. people into right. being awful, horrible monsters. And that's the truth. Like, people, I know you love Tony Stark. That he will never exist in this world. No. A true altruistic millionaire would be donating his money to... Like, he would take what he needs to survive to pay for a reasonable home and a reasonable lifestyle, and the rest would be going to charities. The rest would be going to truly altruistic works where professionals who know what the fuck they're doing are in place to make sure that he or his, that money is going to a useful cause versus just going to whatever the fuck they want. Like, that's how that would really turn out. Yeah. I'm sorry to be the one to break your hearts, but that's what happens. Well, not even charities. They would just pay their taxes. Like, I mean, that too. charities are just a way for them to avoid taxes and to fund the things that they want funded anyways and to dodge taxes, which are a lot more important than charity work really like if we actually if all of the billionaires and the corporations they own actually paid their taxes we would have so much more money that could go to social programs and stuff like yeah. it's just that's why we're always having budget problems is because the people who should be contributing the most instead decide to just like oh i i get, put it to a charity so it's it's all fine it doesn't matter well, they would put it in a charity they didn't run. That would be a big boost. That would also help, yeah. Uh, donate it to, you know, and not a church charity either. I'm sure there are good ones. And that's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to be nice. But, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot, way too many of them are focused more on uh, on bringing more people to the church than they are on helping anyone. Just like good yeah. old Mommy Teresa. Friggin' hypocrite nonsense. I hate Mother Teresa. She spent more time giving people Bibles than she did helping them in any way. It was basically extortion. So apparently NASA had an incident with a corned beef sandwich. Corned beef sandwich? Yeah. Well, what did it do? It, somebody snuck it aboard. Uh, You're not allowed to have corn. I guess, yeah, you have to have the, the tube foods freeze-dried. It was um, in 1965 spacecraft nicknamed Molly Brown after the unsinkable Molly Brown. Uh, they made... NASA didn't approve the nickname, made in hopes to avoid a sinking during crash down. They offered to rename it the Titanic, and NASA relented. It was the last Gemini flight NASA allowed crews to name. 
Uh, Yikes, guys! guys. That's up. pretty. That's pretty morbid. <laughs> they uh, took, or he smuggled a corned beef sandwich on. Uh, the crumbs and microgravity could have caused millions of dollars in damage to the ship, so he quit eating it. <laughs> yeah. The sandwich caused trouble back on Earth. Uh, several members of Congress were upset that the official food that was to be evaluated and had cost the taxpayers millions was being ignored. Uh, the lawmakers and press weren't aware that the food didn't serve any scientific objection on this mission. It was only being evaluated based on taste and convenience, and a few bites of the sandwich certainly did, did interfere with that. We have taken steps to prevent recurrence of corned beef sandwiches in future flights. Members of Congress set up an appropriations committee meeting with NASA to discuss the deli sandwich. The astronaut was reprimanded, and NASA began having stricter regulations on what astronauts can bring aboard. Now, when we say corned beef, just corned beef and bread, or are we talking a little mayo, maybe some sauerkraut, a full Reuben? There is a replica of the sandwich in a museum. Ooh, which museum? I don't know. Damn it, I need to plan my next it. vacation, Andrew. I mean, it's probably in Florida. Probably. Uh, <laughs> let, me, yeah. let me check their source. This corned beef sandwich preserved in resin memorializes the infamous sandwich incident during the Gemini 3 flight. John Young co-pilot snuck a corned beef sandwich from a favorite deli into space by concealing it in his spacesuit. He pulled it out mid-flight for Virgil Grissom a bite. Jesus Christ. During the flight. You're gonna choke, dude. The G-Force is gonna shove that right down your esophagus. Oh, God. I need to see where it's stored. Uh... Doesn't say. The uh -huh. article... The article that they got the story from does not say. Dang. I was so excited to, to hear. If anyone knows where the sandwich is encased in resin. Where's that sandwich? From space to Congress, it surely was the most dramatic few bites of corned beef ever eaten. Nice. Jesus Christ. Apparently, Auntie Anne's has an incredibly dark origin. Oh yeah, fuck Auntie Anne's. They're a terrible company. Uh, I remember back in Seattle when we were fighting for the $15 minimum wage, Auntie Anne's was one of the companies that decided to argue, uh, but then we'd have to start charging our customers more. We can't afford as a business to pay our workers a living wage. Fuck Auntie Anne's. Well, they're doing really well from what I know, so... Mm. Yeah. They're, 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 I've not seen an Auntie Anne's in years. Uh, uh, there is one in a Jacksonville mall. I can't remember which one, but I do not go to it for exactly those reasons. They're a garbage company full of garbage people with workers who deserve a lot more respect. When you hear that the founder of Auntie Anne's wrote a memoir in 2008 called Twist of Faith, your instinct was probably to roll your eyes just there, but it turns out this was a life worth memoiring. Anne Byler was raised about as far from the culture of the malls where her stores flourish. Where do you think Anne Byler was from, Iggy? Oh, I'm gonna say Utah. No, you're you're on the right path. Mm. Yeah, Twist of Faith was. Uh, a good clue, but you went the wrong direction with it. Same number of rules, same number of rules, different group. Hmm. Um, uh, 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 Pennsylvania Amish, Pennsylvania Dutch. The Amish community, yes. Yeah. With 30 nieces and nephews, she's oh not Oh my god, a that's this is horrible. I'm yanking the dang bird's feathers right out. Yeah. That's awful. And he didn't even yeah. do like one at a time, he plucked them all at once. Listen, imagine having one hair hey. plucked out at a time, 
for like hey, 50 don't hairs. Don't shame the bird. I'm just that's oh ugh. It's too much. She mild. has 30 nieces and nephews, My making goodness. her a legitimate aunt. <laughs> In the Amish tradition, she dropped out of school in eighth grade, got married at eighteen. Oh, I didn't know that they even uh, they even put you in school for that long. I mean, she was well on the path to traditional Amish wife and motherhood until one of her daughters was killed in a tractor accident. Oh no! Which any comfort can be found in such a situation is at least an extremely Amish way to go. What? The Amish don't use tractors, do they? Or are they non-mechanical, or not non-mechanical, non-gas-powered tractors? Would they even use machines? I because I know it might depend on the specific kind of Amish community. Hmm. I know that with Mennonites, for instance, at least according to one source I saw years ago, they are allowed to have trucks. Oh, really? Yeah, but that's Mennonite versus Amish, and so, take, and I'm no expert by any stretch, so grain of salt. Um, because people in religious communities don't so much as change their underwear without consulting the church leader, Byler sought help from her, with her grief from her pastor. Ooh, no, that was not a good story. Oh no. Just, whatever you think it was, you're probably right. Oh, no. Uh, when she broke her silence, she blew the lid off a jar of theological deceit that was way more full than she ever guessed. The pastor had been doing that to every woman he knew, including all of her sisters. Oh, wow. And she was the first to say anything? That's, that's yep. unfortunate. Uh, so... That's actually why she bought her first pretzel shop in 1988. Her husband wanted to open a counseling center where women could seek free help. It was guaranteed not to end up like that, but the Amish are not known for their vast wealth, so he, she bought a pretzel shop that happened to go on the market at a steep discount to fund the venture. So it had a noble intention early on. Yeah. Sure, she didn't have a clue how to make pretzels, but she committed herself so hard to learning the fine art of pretzel making and, you know, business, that within a year, the middle school dropout was running eight different locations of Auntie Anne's pretzels. She was going to fund those women's counseling, damn it, even if it meant succumbing to the evils of electricity. <laughs> Don't worry, none of this has dampened her faith in the slightest. In fact, she recently did a stint on the board of directors for the Museum of the Bible with that Hobby Lobby guy who stole all those artifacts. Oh, of course. She doesn't appear to have been directly connected with that incident, but don't sleep on her. This is one ruthless bitch who's seen some shit. We would all be so lucky to, to have her as our scary Jesus auntie. Mm. Uh, yeah, so auntie Only Anne's... she would uh, treat her workers hey. better. Yeah. So not only is Auntie Anne a real person... The origin of the pretzel company had a noble purpose. Well, that's that's kind of you know the uh, the best intentions, you know. <sighs> so here's a a crack thing. Characters on uh, sitcoms and other shows and things they never actually do right. Oh, uh, yeah, it was like punk. those, like, the, similar to, uh, uh, the things people do in movies that nobody does in real life. Yeah. The the one that always gets me is, uh, they just, they, they'll they brush their teeth and then just go on their day without rinsing their mouth out. That's, that's awful. Yeah. You mm. never see them floss, ever? Oh, I don't floss. Yeah. It's actually really bad a... for your gums by, uh, most actual scientific studies on the matter. I have a, a obsessive compulsion to do it. Like, I, I have to floss or I get very upset and nervous. Hmm. Um, knocking on doors. Sitcom characters just walk right in. Yeah, which is, I'm pretty sure, mostly based on Kramer, but then, like, Kramer no. was supposed to be, like, a total jerk. No. Like, he's the most famous like, example of it today, but hmm. think about it. You friends, no one ever knocked. 
Urkel just walked right in. Well, uh, in uh, in Friends, they're supposed to be close enough that it wouldn't matter, although it's New York, so... Uh, and with Urkel, I mean, Urkel was supposed to be obnoxious, so that sounds pretty on-brand for him. Yeah, but even if you go back, like, it started around the 80s. Like, I the feel not like it was just a ma Yeah, I think it was just a matter of writers being Story like, we don't have time to do that. Just, just go in. Like, just cut the... Cut the fat out of this script. Just walk right in. Yeah. So, starting around the 80s, people just walked into each other's houses all the time. Uh, unsure when to clap in movies, just follow the leader. So, wh whoever starts to... Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like That was not really a thing before that, but now people do that specifically because it's a thing in movies. It's, a, it's always the, the, the life imitating art, imitating life nonsense, and just goes down and down and down. Now there's so many d jokes that are, like, uh, actively, like, making fun of the trope, uh, as if it's, like, a thing that people did. Or how about in movies where people just run through a kitchen and no one ever stops them? Like, hey, yeah. you got this kitchen, what are you doing? At the very least, you'd be tripping, because people are, are swinging through there real quick. Like, there's a very specific flow a professional kitchen has to have to function, and you slamming yourself in there, Jason Bourne, is uh, not going to be... not going to work out so good. What's your opinion on shoes in the house? Disgusting. Don't do that. Every movie. Uh... Has a character ever had to wait hours in the airport? Not because the plot says someone needs to catch up with them, but just because there's bad weather or something. We've never well, seen it on screen before, despite all this having experienced it in real life. It's the I'm gonna take that's the same as a reason. story writer. You just cut that part out because like no one wants to see that part of the story. Right. Like, it's, it's like the same thing. Shit, it's the same thing I've stuff. always had with like um, what is it like people. People are always like, oh, so why are we following this character? Oh, this character's like the best thing ever. And it's like, yeah, we're following the interesting character. Like, oh, why why did we just happen? The main character just happens to be the chosen one. It's like, yeah, we're following them because they're the interesting person in this story. Why would like, why we be would following you some follow rando who ends up not being the chosen one or whatever? But you don't want to follow the village baker. Yeah. And then find out later, like, oh, by the way, your neighbor's the chosen one. He just saved the world. And you're like, I made a case! Like, yeah, no similarly, one... similarly, um, oh, thank you for following, uh, KJY45KK. I apologize, I do not read Korean, so I don't know what you just said, but I appreciate you following, for certain. Um. That is very weird. I... I couldn't see the fucking chat despite it being up. Hmm. Do you know? So I didn't get. Um, I refreshed the page. Right. Uh, and it's the same reason. Like a, a trope I see often as as kind of a mistake in a lot of story writing is uh, they'll always talk about like oh a time long ago that was far more interesting than this. It's like well why are we not going back to that more interesting time and focus on that rather than yeah. this thing that you've even admitted is not as interesting it's generally because they're hoping to get uh, optioned for a prequel <laughs> and the uh, person said hello ah hello to you too it's nice to see you um right. let me see I want to be able to say their name so control V Hans Q, according to this. Uh, hello to you. It's nice to meet you. Alright, big here. We, we are not, man. uh, we are not very smart, so <laughs> English is definitely a... I, I don't think the language aptitude really is, uh, that intrinsic to intelligence. I've met a lot of very smart people who only speak one language, and I've also met a lot of really dumb people who speak many languages, so... Our first and just not well um I wish I would have popped like what 
Yeah. Yeah. I've tried. I've tried the Duolingo and stuff. Thing. It's it's difficult. You're the closest to. Um, I mean, you're much closer to a polyglot than I am because you know at least a decent amount of Spanish. Like, if I dropped you somewhere in Mexico, you'd probably be able to survive for a while before you ran out of vocabulary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dang it, where did the other toad go? Oh, I was, like, right below it. Dang it. Let's try that again. My question is... I wish TV was like in the movies where, like, if something's going on, you had the relevant information right then. How so? Uh, what's an example? Like, whenever you see them turn on a movie, or in a movie, whenever they turn on the TV, whatever they're worried about right then is covered in the news immediately. Like, Oh, yeah, that's always a little too convenient. The, the slightly removed version of that would be, um, they turn on the TV... They turn on the, or the TV's already on in an early scene, and there's just subtle foreshadowing to a scene that happened, like, a location that happens later or something. Like, that's less annoying, but it's still pretty obvious, to the point that it was lampooned in uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Um, the, thing, the, the thing that always annoys me in movies, more than anything, is seeing them try to capture the internet... Uh, the biggest examples that I've seen recently would be, uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Their uh -huh. concept of how the internet works is pretty childish, to be honest. Like, them trying to make fake YouTube comments are, um, ooh, it, it, it was not good. And then, uh, the other one was Guns Akimbo, the Daniel Radcliffe movie. Uh, the movie already feels like it, it desperately wants to be a 90s indie movie and man yeah again like they they've got like stream commenters going on this like super violent like live stream and wow yeah it's it's not even remotely accurate <laughs> it's it's and it's so immediately seen? obvious to anyone who uses the internet with any kind of regularity have you seen trailers or like this one famous clip going around for the movie, uh, Money Plane. Money it's Plane? It's got Edge and Frasier. What? I do I... Yeah! I'm not huh? familiar. Oh god, so Frasier, uh, buys up all of Edge's debt. Now I'm talking about the wrestler Edge and Kelsey Grammer. Uh, his character buys up all of Edge's debt and has him infiltrate this plane where betting occurs and in the plane all this stuff goes on blah 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 and brains. they whatever you want to bet on it's there mm. the baddest people like it's untraceable <clears throat> untraceable money blah 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 Kelsey Grammer wants the money on the plane buys up Edge's debt to coerce him into doing it for him. Mmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the clip that's circulating has Kelsey Grammer explaining the money playing to him. Mm-hmm. Are we, are we on PG-13 rules right now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll just send you the message. Okay. I'll send you... I'll send it to you. Uh, um... I am com I'm kind of completely stumped on this riddle. What is it? It's the it's the second square one. It's near wall walls of waves, a fire's place in earth. I mean the second part is just like that's where the thing's buried, but like near walls uh -huh. of waves, a uh -huh. fire's place. Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. Think about the most a um, useless place you've been. There's nothing there. There's no reason to go there so far. In it's the desert. In the desert? Yeah, it's in the desert. You're in the wrong place if you're in town. Hmm. In the desert. Where have I been in the desert? Where have you been that had <laughs> fireplaces? 
fireplace. Oh, wait, the, like, the ruins? Right? Maybe. I think. I mean, it said a fireplace. Yeah, that's the problem, is I was, pl uh, I have not played it since yesterday, so I kind of lost my mental map of the desert. Oh, hmm. that's gonna suck for you. Anyway, um, so, Kelsey Grammer, when explaining just, like, how wild Money Plane is, explains different things you can bet on, and says this. Uh -huh. Wait. I'm typing it. Wait, wait, wait. Is it... Yeah. Does this have fireplaces? There you go. <sighs> no. You're in the wrong one. <sighs> it's the one with the big paper macho booze. Oh. Okay, that one's a little further south, then. Hmm. <clears throat> so I sent you a transcript of the line. Uh huh. On Discord. <laughs> oh wow. So how do you bet on that exactly? Uh, who survives? Or wait, no, not Is yourself. it whether he can do that? Is it? I. Whether presume. he would do that? Is it? You're you are in the wrong place. God damn it! It's north of you. North? Yeah. I don't remember there being anything north of that. Hold you're on. Going into the, like if, if the professor is leaving you, you've gone the wrong way. Well, yeah, I figured it's already too late because I'd already started in there, so it still had to complete the animation. It's north, and then when you get to the area with the stone, with the laser beams, you head east, but not northeast towards the city. Oh, right, there's another goddamn entrance over there. See, this is why I hate... De Follow this is my walls. thing with the desert levels. It's always like, it can be fun for a bit, but then it, it just comes down to you're navigating huge swaths of friggin' sand. Do you know like, how, how am I supposed to keep any track of any of this? There's barely any landmarks. Do you know the rule for getting out of a maze? Well, yeah. Do that. Okay, that only... Go that's only relevant if there's only one location you're going to if i'm going to any number of of uh different locations it doesn't matter which like where the hand is going follow if you follow maze rules you will get anywhere in the desert you're headed i promise the desert is just a big maze i assure you well, yeah, it's not that I don't know how to get to the places. It's that I get turned around because everything looks the same. Mm. There it is. There's the fireplace. All right. Well, there's multiple fireplaces. And there's you a fire. See a wall there of is waves. a fireplace. Oh wait, no, those are suns. Okay, hold on. Waves. There's the waves. Yeah. Let me through. Let me through. Uh, this is far more fun than it should be. No, that's that's a coin. Here. In the fireplace. Or how people never lock their doors in movies. Oh, yeah. I remember that was a thing in, like, uh, one of the... Whatever, the first Annabelle movie, which I saw in theaters for some reason, um, is that they make it a point that the, the wife is nervous that they don't lock their door in like the 50s and it it becomes a big point because um god damn i gotta reset the oh god oh again <clears throat> but then it becomes a big point because they actually do get invaded by like a manson family uh proxy okay okay there i got that one Here's one I disagree with, because this is, like, someone's personal thing. If it starts raining in a movie, it means characters are going to huddle under an umbrella. Try that yourself. 
If it's raining heavy enough for you to get out an umbrella, you can expect the wind to snatch it out of your hands. Like What? What are you talking you? about the wind? Also, that is like a very, very well-worn trope in Japanese media. But also, if that person waiting until it's rainy enough and windy enough to yank the umbrella out of their hand, maybe that's their problem. I'm getting it out before then. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, when I lived in Savannah, I would absolutely walk oh, to check our mail with an umbrella in Sunday, like, on a sunny day, because it was fucking, that's fucking what they were originally designed for, mm -hmm. was the sun blockers. And guess what? They work amazingly well for blocking the sun. Yeah, they're way better at that than they are for rain. Your feet get wet. Yeah, and yeah, so, like, rain, if it's raining, unless you tilt it to face the rain, which is never over your shoulder like you always see people doing, it's always some other direction. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna get soaked. You, maybe your face is dry, but that's it. Yeah, it's because people don't want to look dorky wearing a, a raincoat with a hood. But it's like, that's that's more effective. Um, so, there's a claim that, speaking of the Amish, hmm? that the Amish don't get coronaviruses because they don't have television. No, if they don't get coronavirus, it's because they don't interact with the outside world as much. I mean, probably, but... Uh, let's see. So, television, or telephones are an in interesting illustration of the way that Amish families incorporate technology into their lives. Visitors are often mistaken, or often mistakenly think the Amish use nothing modern. God so damn it! I gotta reboot the fucking Elgato for like the fourth time this stream. Piece of crap. So when they notice an Amish person making a call from a pay telephone booth, they might be surprised. They may wonder why Amish sometimes use their the phone of their English non-Amish neighbors. Uh, many visitors are even more shocked to discover that some of the buildings that resemble outhouses sitting near an Amish house are actually private Amish telephone booths. Noting that Amish people typically do not own telephones, the site explained how telephones made their way into Amish communities in the 1950s. So, the use of the community phone or phone shanty was permitted beginning in the 50s, when more Amish were forced to go into businesses and hotels to use homes for emergency purposes and to contact doctors, dentists, veterinarians, and food dealers. This community phone building, which often resembles an outhouse, is typically built at the end of a farm lane and shared by several neighboring families. The objective of this concept was to allow access but maintain distance. Hence, the phone is not in the house and the number is unlisted to be used essentially for necessary outgoing calls not socializing. As is typical of the Amish, when a new technology comes along, its effect on the church and community is examined. The technology should not be an intrusion into the home, but rather serve the social purposes and goals of the group. With that in mind, the Amish often repurpose the technology in a sense to align with their community beliefs. In other words, technology like phones or television are not foreign alien concepts to Amish people. Gazebo retailer based in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, had this to say of the relationship between Amish people and technology in general. The Amish do not have electricity running into their houses like the average American does, true. However, most families and businesses have generators which they use to power various appliances or devices in their homes. Also, though they will not allow a phone in their homes, it is not uncommon for Amish to own cell phones for business purposes or to have a landline phone in the barn or other outbuilding. Although yeah, they hard. don't. They they live a simple life, but they still use technology for its practical purposes. Correct. Although it was hard to be sure, it seemed possible that Amish cell phone owners might, on occasion, sneak a peek at the internet in addition to making phone calls. Hmm. As far as Amish awareness of the coronavirus pandemic, a news source in Pennsylvania, home to a very large Amish community, addressed how the Amish were uh, faring in early April 2020. Stephen Nolt, a senior scholar at Young Center for Anabaptist and Pietist Studies at Elizabethtown College, 
told PanLive.com that even in the pandemic early days, community leaders and communities they led were very aware of the virus and its spread. They take the or they take this seriously and have gotten messages from trusted sources. At the same time, many Amish folks are also taking their cues from their non-Amish neighbors and friends. In a rural context, a semi-rural context, I think we're seeing that not necessarily all Americans in those settings are responding in the same way. Nolte also explained that the idea Amish people are unaware of current events or didn't read newspapers was yet another fallacy. The Amish may not be as connected to current news sources as the general public, but they are, not a, they are also not cut off. There is a popular impression that the Amish are entirely sequestered and they have no idea what's going out on in the world. That's simply not true, and especially here in South Central Pennsylvania and Lancaster County. The Amish are regular newspaper consumers and have regular contacts with non-Amish friends and co-workers who tend to keep them apprised of current events. Lancaster County, Pennsylvania Commissioner Greg Lehman confirmed that a county officials immediately looped Amish elders into discussions about the pandemic in its early days. We are all concerned about our Amish neighbors, Lehman said. They are well informed and know what is going on. They are trying to maintain the lines of communication and open, or trying to maintain the... That's not a sentence. Mm -hmm. We are trying to maintain the lines of communication open, and we are at least informed in what steps they are taking to mitigate this COVID-19 pandemic. Alice Yoder, Director of Community Health at a Lancaster Hospital said, Amish communities have been very open, wanting to understand what COVID is about and what it meant to them. In April 11th, 2020, a regional expert spoke to NBC News and referenced the Amish internet <coughs> and how often information spreads by word of mouth fairly quickly in Amish communities. On May 30th, 2020, a local news source in Pennsylvania reported that Amish communities complied with state orders and closed their schools, even introducing virtual learning. Did any Amish people get COVID-19? Unfortunately, the notion that the pandemic spared the Amish community was not rooted in factual reality. On April 14th, Nolte spoke to another outlet about Amish workers exposed to the broader community. In May 2020, Amish people continued following social re distancing recommendations. On June 16th, a news organization in Ohio, another place where the Amish or there are Amish communities, reported that communities in Holmes County, including the Amish, have been hit by the virus about equally. That same day, another news outlet in Ohio confirmed an outbreak of COVID-19 in an Amish community. So yes, they do get COVID, and yes, they do have technology. We yeah. are, unfortunately... In I don't know States, why the very... hell they thought, what, TV was somehow linked these are the same people who believe that 5G will cause COVID. The it's the same people, people who are like, oh, cell phones, they're so unsafe. It's like, dude, stop. You... They would not release it to the public if it had not already been tested for safety. Well... Eh. There, there was a period of time where we had radon suppositories. So. Yeah, like in the 50s, there are well, regulations around that, that now. But... And it, more than anything, the people that those people generally support, like our current administration, would like to erode all of those, uh, those very, would like to erode those very regulations that are protecting us from exactly the things they're most worried about. So you'd think they'd be more on top of that, but instead they're looking out more for the business. Or they don't realize that's what they're doing, but that's what the people they're supporting are doing that for. The reason that people like that don't like regulations is because regulations prevent them from making money as easy. It has nothing yeah. to do with whether or not it's good for the people. It's bad for their personal bankroll that's already packed to bursting. Yeah. Um... So here's a headline that'll make you... Th this headline kind of gives away the ghost. Mm -hmm. um, Elon Musk on Grimes, whatever that fucking kid's name is, and the eventual gentrification of Mars. Wow. G like, I mean, didn't even probably. try to hide the phrase. Also, it's impossible. Like, we... We will never have 
a colony on Mars. No. Period. It's the amount. The place. amount of. T that's the thing. Is like even if we start Mars travel now, it's still well more than a century before we will have the technology to do any form of safe terraforming. Like the only people who will be qualified to live on any sort of colony on Mars will have to be astronauts. Like it's not going to be safe for the average person for a long, long, long time. Even then, outside of our lifetimes, long. Like we think of Mars, that's the problem. We think Mars is just a dead version of Earth, but we don't think about what that means. We think it means oh, there's no plants or you know animals. No, Mars is a dead planet. It cannot sustain life at no, all. No, right it does now. not have an atmosphere. Period. Not only does it not have an atmosphere, and we have no kind of technology have... that can create an atmosphere. So it not only has no atmosphere. The we have something very important that it does not have. I mean, technically it has two, but they're not big enough to fucking do anything. We have a moon that helps regulate our orbit. Oh, and yeah, namely, I didn't even think about that, but that's, yeah, that's actually a pretty big deal. Because the Mars does not have a moon that helps with its uh, orbit, we spin at an angle. Like, we are, like, when you look at us from space, the North Pole points off at an angle relative to the sun. It is not uh, perpendicular to the orbit of the Earth and the sun. So that as it orbits the sun, we have seasons. Otherwise, we would only have night, day, and summer. That would be it. Yeah. So. Uh, God Mars. damn it. I'm not get. I, I can't get this riddle either. What is it? Uh, eclipse the sun above the lake. Go to town. Oh, so this on one's southern, in town. And stand on the southern bank of the pond. God damn it, because you said that the other one was definitely not in town, I figured none of them would be. Okay. Ugh. And stand on the southern bank of the pond, right. and you'll see a spot where the uh, power blocks the sun. Yep, yep. Mm. That. There we go. So then right here? Can I dig here? Yes, there it is. Um, so... Oh, misdirection. Because because the Mars does not have that to uh, regulate the orbit or the angle of the planet in its orbit, mm -hmm. Mars goes from uh, perpendicular to borderline horizontal and back again, constant wobble as it spins. So it doesn't, like there's times when it just has one season there's times when days last forever on one side and not on the and night on the other. There's times when it has a seasonal shift. And because of that, you don't have <laughs> it is also like the biggest problem. And this really is the biggest problem. Even if you could give it an atmosphere right now. If you had a magic bubble making machine that poop, there's an atmosphere. Mars does not have a melting core. Mm. Earth does, which keeps the core moving, which gives us a magnetic field, which prevents solar winds from damaging our planet, which allows life to thrive. Without that magnetic field, the solar winds will rip away our atmosphere. So if our molten core just stopped being molten and hardened, we all die immediately. Yes, which was in explored, painful... uh, maybe not so scientifically accurately, in the film The Core. Have not seen it. It's. But I mean, it's imagine... it's what you expect. It's a it's a really big cheesy, uh, disaster movie. I liked it as a kid, but it's probably probably does not hold up very well. Uh, basically, um, if you 
imagine like a solar hurricane ripping everything off the planet. That's what would happen to us. So the concept of terraforming Mars or, you know, turning Mars into a colony, it will never happen. We have no way to melt Mars's core. We have no way to give Mars a large enough moon to stabilize its fucking orbit. We have none of the... Th like, we don't have a way to give it an atmosphere. It's, and it's not like you can just melt the ice caps like some believe. Like, oh, if we just melt the ice caps on Mars, then it'll release enough gas to create a new atmosphere. No. no. It was ripped away and blown off into space. Like, it's not there anymore. There's mm -hmm. no gases there to make an atmosphere with. It, it's gone. It is a non-option. It is an X. It is a rock. That is all it is. And we will never be able to... Like, it is one thing to explore it for education. We will never live on Mars. Yeah, that's the thing is people really... Like, when we say that... Um, like, when there is news that we found another Earth-like planet, it's like, that is a big deal. The conditions required for life to exist are so very very specific like there's a reason that earth specifically is the only one in our uh, solar system that sustains life because the others are either too close to the sun and no life can live in the temperatures both uh extreme and uh, at both extremes and there's just no way that they can handle um the the lack of atmosphere like there's so many, so many factors that have to go perfect for it to happen. And it's just not viable on any other planet that we've found yet. And the ones that we have found are so far away that anybody who goes out to explore them is not coming back. So the closest circumstellar habitable zone planet is... On August 24th, 2016, astronomers announced the discovery of a rocky planet in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, the closest star to Earth, not counting the sun. That's a rocky planet. That's not even like a habitable, habitable planet, necessarily. Yeah, it's, it's um, getting in the right ballpark, basically, but it's still not there. But it is the nearest known exoplanet and is orbiting the habitable zone of its star. So it's in the zone, but that doesn't necessarily mean it can produce and contain life. Yep. That is 4.2 light years from Earth. To give you an idea of how far that is, if you could move at the speed of light somehow, it would still take you four years of travel to get there. And it is to impossible keep, to... keep in mind, the closest, the like fastest we've been able to go is somewhere in the range of the speed of sound, basically. Well, no, we've broken the speed of sound. Yeah, well, That's I mean, like, is. it's clo much, much closer to that than anywhere near the speed of light. Right. So, um, like, to, to be clear, it's like, mock. and the speed of sound is what, like, a, a millionth of the speed of light? Uh, let me, cause like it will be thousands of years at the very, very least, so, probably millions. The crew of NASA's Apollo 10 reached a top speed of 24,791 miles per hour. That would be 39,897 kilometers per hour. Um, that would be, let's see, what's the speed of sound? Because sound is measured in uh, Mach. So Mach 1 is you've broken the sound barrier. Mach 2 is you've doubled that, etc. Uh, 343 miles a second. 
Uh, or meters to the second, maybe. Um, meters to second. Uh, let me check that in miles per hour. Uh, that would be 767 miles per hour. So when you hear a sonic boom, that is us breaking the sound barrier. That is us going faster than the speed of light. Um, so let me think. Uh, the, we've gone our speed of light. So 767 is speed of sound. Speed of light is 6.70 E plus 8. Let me do that in uh, miles or miles per you know, just speed of light. Um, hmm. 299,792 kilometers per second. Ooh. So, per second. And we can barely break the sound booth. Yep. So, even if you were to try and go to the nearest habitable planet, and it happened to be that one, you need essentially a giant floating country. Yeah, that's the other thing. Outside that of the U.S. It's, it's not just getting there. It's the fact that you have to be able to get a m enormous mass to get right. to that speed and maintain it. Which, once you break the escape velocity, you're just going to continue with that because there's no friction in space. But, yeah, there's no way that we can break escape velocity with that large of a mass. Not that I'm aware of. Well, here's another thing. Another big problem is if you move at the speed of light, you are picking up particles along the way that are now being pushed at the speed of light in front of you on your windshield, for instance. And when you stop, they don't. So those particles slam. Like, if you pick up a pebble, just a pebble, or there's a loose screw that comes loose when you hit the brakes, that screw is going to be traveling at the speed of light and slam into whatever is in front of you. God damn And it. if that's the planet you're trying to get to, you've just destroyed a planet. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, like, Elon Musk wants to do stuff like, oh, we're going to Mars, but it's like, we're not ready to go to Mars, not a, a, by a long shot. Like, we may get there and be able to do a Mars walk, but that's not going to be that helpful because it's not a long-term solution. The long-term solution is for people like him and his company, people he probably knows now and could convince to do so, need to stop destroying the planet we already have because yeah. it is corporations doing that. Average people, even if we all were being as green as possible, wouldn't be enough because 80% of the carbon emissions are coming from companies that we have no control over. With that, I am going to have to take a quick break here. Uh, do you want to be on mic or off? Um, I'll stay on and keep dropping some science knowledge on you. Oh, yeah. All right, folks. Listen to the, listen to the science facts from Andrew Bench. Bow, ba -da -bow, ba -da -bow. Did a be right back. So further complicating the problem is you would literally need what in the United States would be something the size of North Carolina, a state, or in other parts of the world, a country. Um, you would need that. You would need it multi-tiered. You would need it to be self-sustaining. You cannot rely on sunlight for heat, for growing light, for uh, vitamin D. You have to have some kind of a source for producing vitamin D. Uh, you need to have some kind of exercise regimen that people can do because you will never be able to, like, you won't have artificial gravity. You just can't. You would, you would have to build a, a giant orb that spun to creating things similar. And you'd, you can't rely that every generation of people is going to be smart enough to maintain the place. You can't even, you can't even guarantee that, like, to, because it's going to take that a uh, long fucking time 
to get to Alpha Centauri. Let's just assume. Let's be conservative and say 500 years. Right? Let me... While I'm making my point, I will search how long it would take to get to Alpha Centauri. Uh, fastest speed humans have reached was again 200 or 2,000 24,791 miles per hour. Distance to Alpha Centauri in miles. <laughs> 25 trillion miles divided by so 25 thousand million billion trillion divided by 20 we'll, we'll be nice and say 25,000 it would take one trillion years at our fastest rocket to get to Alpha Centauri. One trillion years at the fastest we've ever gone to get to Alpha Centauri. You can't guarantee that the, like, future generations it would take to get there would even keep the same goal in mind, would even be smart enough to maintain the structure, would be able to, like, there would... It would be a completely new culture that arrived. We've not even been around a tenth that long. Like, it's impossible. We'll never get to Alpha Centauri. Ever. Uh, oh, yeah. And actually, it. some of the best fiction out there is stuff that analyzes that. Like, there's a board game. I can't remember what it's what the name is, but there's a board game that is specifically about that. Like, a, an arc vessel... And it's supposed to, it's like not the first generation and not the last generation, the generations in the middle and just how they exist and live knowing that they're not going to ever be able to see a planet and live on a planet of any kind. And what the worst thing is, you have to have eugenics because yeah. you can't expand. You cannot expand a spaceship. So you have to deter, like you have to say, well, y'all can't reproduce because we don't have room for any children you might have. Uh, you missed it. I did the math and mm. the fastest we've ever gone, and I was a little generous right. and rounded up to 25,000 miles an hour. It would take us one trillion years to get to Alpha Centauri. Yep. The second... That is the closest star to us besides our own. We, like, there is some argument to be made that there is the possibility that perhaps we might one day have something like warp speed, which works like a tesseract. It does not mean that you go faster than light. It means that you take the fabric of space and fold it so that point A and point B are right next to each other, and then it swoops out back behind you. Yeah, which um, is only theoretical at this point. Like, speculative. There's no, yeah, there's really, like, the concept exists, but, like, there's no actual, like, ability to do that. Or even, and, I don't think anybody's even conceptualized how you could do that. And even if we could, we have no energy source whatsoever that could possibly even come close to pulling that off yeah no it would take such a weight so we'll never go to mars and colonize it like we'll go to mars and yeah. that's more only true the brave soul that does because he'll never come back oh yeah that's the, uh, elon musk has even stated like he's not going to be on the first crew because he knows they're not coming back which is fucking disgusting going. Like, then he's never going. Yeah, no, he's not. And that's the never... thing is he's he's pretending like it's going to matter. But in reality, he doesn't care if it's actually viable or anything. All he cares is that history books will say Elon Musk funded the the first manned flight to Mars. But nobody fucking remembers who funded it. 
they'll remember the first person that walked on Mars. Well, that's the thing, too, is that they're, t they're treating it like he, that's why he's so focused on taking as much credit as possible, because he knows that if he looks like he's just the, 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 uh, the bankroll for it, they're not going to remember him. But if he's like Elon Musk, this genius who set everything up, like people remember Edison because he, he made it, he like, made he, it, he, they he were his inventions. They weren't the, in it was a bunch of propaganda and that's all Elon Musk does. He's propaganda for himself to make it look like he's so in some way responsible for this other than doing the simple thing of putting money behind it. And the thing is, he can try that all he wants. He won't be remembered for Mars at all. No, because be it's going to be a failure. It's going to be a massive yeah. failure. If he's remembered at all, it will be in infamy for being He'll a be total idiot. He'll be remembered for killing the first guy that got there, and that'll be it. Like, he yeah. will not be well remembered in history because he is such a fucking douche nozzle. Um, but like, it's really cool to think about what we'll learn from going to Mars. It's oh, sure. really cool to think about what we will learn about the history of Mars and our solar system. Yeah. We'll never colonize it. Period. Yeah, it's to the point where possible. there's honestly no reason to send a manned flight. Like, the rovers are d giving us most of the info that we would find from a manned flight anyways, and the risk is just far too great. And you're not likely to survive. Yeah. The first, I'm willing to bet the first two to three sh people that try to get there are not going to live past a week. Period. Yeah. Because here's what you have to do. Let me let me do some quick math for you. Um, cost of lifting one pound into space. It costs ten thousand dollars to put a pound of payload into orbit, into orbit. Okay, so ten thousand dollars per pound of payload in orbit. Okay, you need oxygen tanks, and they have to be very well made, and they have to be enough to last somebody a long time. Yeah, and there's no way in hell they aren't cutting every cost they can the way Musk treats things like he's cut costs on every goddamn thing he's made the one decent thing he's made is tesla and honestly the electric car already fucking existed they were dismantled to help the uh the california clean air commission keep their jobs but like we already had that technology and everything it was all he did was like bring it back and make it marketable so you need gallons and gallons and gallons to the point of tons of water. Uh, you go, you hit those in numerical order, but you gotta read the tomb door on the uh, north wall there to find out what order. Yeah. But you need, need food. Tons of food. You need a home. You need fuel for an electric generator. You need there's so much that you need that you would have to have multiple rockets fired to take multiple payloads at once. Like, you can't have just one rocket go. You have to have a fleet. And most of them would have to be unmanned and would have to just drop their payload, turn around, and head back. And... Even then, you would have to have more coming every couple of months. It's impossible. To sustain a life on Mars the way they want to try and do it now is impossible. It's impossible. It will not happen. It will not happen. Um, people will die within a year of landing on Mars. Yeah. Max. And that's the truth. Like, that's the sick, disgusting truth. Yeah, no, and they're not hiding it either, because they're hoping that enough people are, A, want the glory of being the first people to be on Mars, and B, uh, are 
more interested in the scientific endeavor of it than they are for their lives, which is pretty fucking disgusting considering considering the real reason they're doing it, which is purely out of ego. Exactly. And I want John Saxon die. Who? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Enter the Dragon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that sucks. Um, yeah. Regis actually apparently died I, recently. Regis Philbin? Yeah, that's what I heard from Coco at least. Uh, yeah, on July 25th. That's today. Yeah. Need. Regis Francis Xavier Philbin. Wow. Born in 1931. Yeah, he was like in his 80s, so I'm not shocked. I honestly... 88. Eh, I don't necessarily care. Like, I mostly knew him as the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire from when I was a kid, and he wasn't, like, anything exceptionally interesting. Yeah. He seemed like a nice guy, but I didn't follow him, like... He made a really funny cameo in the movie Lil Nicky, where, like, every... Hell has come to Earth, so everybody's been corrupted, so they basically recreated uh, Regis and Kelly or whatever it was. But in that, he's like, this guy cuts me off in traffic, so I get this bat out of my truck, and I go nuts on him. You know the Untouchables? I was De Niro! And an old lady in the crowd is just like, What's happened to you, Regis? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, the whole thing of going to Mars just really, really boils my blood because it's so fucking, like... It's so transparently not... just d evil. Like, pure, pure disgusting, like nonsense that doesn't need to happen because it's not even viable there's there's not anything that we're gonna get from it other than data that we mostly already have although i will say for anybody who's interested in this kind of stuff uh i'd recommend the book the martian um because it, it is hard sci-fi of a future where manned missions to mars are more common it's not like colonizing but it is like a future where we're just slightly more advanced enough that we can send people on missions like that and it's it's pretty much like actual real science as far as everything I've heard from scientists who have talked about the book uh, the movie is also okay I will say the main character is kind of an annoying douchebag but you can you can tolerate it for the most part because the actual action of the story is so compelling um. Apparently, mm -hmm. from what I understand, the Martian was very close to accurate. Yeah, that's one. That's what I've heard. Like that's um, like not only what is it Interstellar, Interstellar had special effects so accurate that two scientific research papers were able to be written based on its special effects alone. Oh yeah, um, the, the way that I heard it is that they they requested a bunch of data about black holes, and they yes, fed it... Yes, specifically. Right, and they fed it into their simulator for the black hole, oh, and it, okay. it, 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 it did something that had never been found in simulations like that before, and they thought they were messing it up, so they sent the, they sent the imagery back, and the scientists were actually like, Oh, wait, that's what it would do. And it's actually taught them stuff about black holes. Like, the, the concept of it having the, not so much a ring, but the, like, disc in the middle, that yeah. is something that they only found through physics simulation. Well, here's the thing. You're half right. The reason that they thought they had it wrong, the special effects folks, wasn't because they hadn't seen it it's why they hadn't seen it before scientists kind of had a had a idea that it was there but their science is so woefully underfunded 
-hmm. that they didn't have uh, equipment good enough to actually portray it. Yeah, whereas and Hollywood has all the money has... to burn on garbage like that. And so they had far more advanced computers and their special effects budget was so much greater than what scientists are able to afford in general that uh yeah so that's what it was and so they went to the scientists and the scientists were like finally we know we have what it like so it's actually the most accurate depiction of a black hole and that's what the papers were actually written about because they were so accurate uh they like the math all showed that it should be there but they just could not afford to do anything better than what looked like just dots on a page and yeah so yeah that's why is that their budget was too small to actually be able to render that now only if the script were decent i mean the script i haven't seen it but you know it's everything I've heard is that uh, Christopher Nolan should not be doing character dramas. No, I don't like Christopher Nolan movies. Like I did not like the Batman movies he did. Really? Because nope. I'm not a huge fan of Batman Begins. Nope. Or I don't uh, like Batman Begins. I don't like Dark Knight. I don't like Dark Knight Rises. I don't like any of them. See, I I love Dark Knight. The others I feel are kind of just given a pass because they are the prequel and sequel respectively to the dark knight but i feel like of the three that's the only one that was actually decent um i don't like it like i'm gonna be honest i think that they're kind of crap I'll even go so far as to say something super controversial. I liked the Schumacher movies better. Really? Mm. I mean, I can enjoy the Schumacher movies, but they are actively, like, j just amateur trash. Like, they're just not well made. But they're better Batman stories. Like, here's the thing about the Nolan Batman movies. If you changed them to any other characters like if you just changed the names and took the ears off the bat suit it would just be a, a guy angry at his t lot in life you know mm, how no i know no 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 yes no. you can say that but there is no way that you that can movie. you can adjust that so that people won't immediately like if you tried that i can guarantee everybody be like what is this fake Batman shit? Like, there's no way that you can remove that from the source material without yeah, people could. immediately catching on. You could, and here's why. First movie, it's just a guy who is... I mean, it's basically the Punisher, but with bad ears. That's all the first movie is. Um, second movie is just, uh... Fucking, um... A guy with a small private military group like you have all over this country going up against a terrorist cell. Um, mm, there's a lot movie, more to it than that. It's really not. There, it's really not. That's all the is. Joker's group is. is it's no, no, no. I, that's what cell. I'm saying is it's not just the Joker. It's also specifically how they react to Batman himself specifically. The fear element. that The intimidation that he's created in it the the fascism that comes from Harvey Dent and his way of law and order which leads into the next movie where the uh, the the Harvey Dent act base is basically just pure fascism it removes uh, due so process it's, so it's literally just what's going on right now without the need for a clown or a guy in a bat suit yes That's but why it's, it adds it, it, it be... adds it adds to the conversation specifically about vigilantism and whether or not that's actually the best way to go about things or whether or not it's better to go about it through uh, a form of actual due process and justice. So here's where that falls apart. In the Nolan movies, 
Batman is the hero and everybody loves him in the end. Even if at the end of the second and very beginning of the first, he's not the hero. Um, he still, like, the audience is very well aware that he is definitely the hero. And in the real world, that is, you know, the opposite of what we have right now. Because what group is being labeled as the terrorists? The protesters. The Black Lives Matter protesters. The people in Seattle. The Chaz. They're the ones, you know, called uh, the... Um, Iggy, do you want help with this puzzle? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Because you're very wrong. Listen. Listen. I don't need oh, an answer to ev I don't need an answer to every puzzle, okay? I'm an adult. Right. I can figure it out eventually. You, 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 you might think it it's easier than that, but that's because you already know the answer. Well, I mean, I knew the answer immediately. Just but, um, give me a, a second. It doesn't take me usually more than 30 seconds for most of these. But, like, you've got the vigilantes right now, straight up. Uh, being hired by DHS and militia groups, they're the ones defending statues and saying. Well, yeah, we that's will not my point. Us. Is I'm not saying I agree with it, but, but that's, that's the whole. Why, that's the whole point. Is that that's the, why it's not a Batman movie? Well, that's the whole point Batman, of the story. Is that it's actually analyzing the shit and pointing out the like inherent fascism in. Uh, in superheroes, in that kind of uh, a story, that kind of a character. The only, if they had gone with Omac instead of the Joker. Omac. You. Omac. He made Omac. Batman built Omac. Omac. He is. Omac is like Batman's version of a. Uh, um, what the fuck is it? Ultron. I, there's no way they were going to do that. Because I can guarantee you right now the average person does not who know who you're talking about. And while but he doesn't care it. that much about marketability, there still has to be some amount of name recognition. Otherwise, why would but he be making a that. Batman movie? They just didn't call it that. They absolutely made Omac in that movie. Hmm. The giant uh, system that Lucius Fox was like, this is wrong. When he had the... Like, that was essentially baby omac if they had just committed to that and taken it farther that would have been a batman story but instead it was just uh this is what would really happen if batman existed like we know what would really happen that's not why we're here well that's Chris. not even that's not even There's necessarily of, what, what it's what about really it's happen. about the moral ambiguity of that it's not about there being a specific right or wrong answer to it it's about like is this something we should actually allow if it gets results or not? Like, that's the problem that a lot of American media has, is that it treats that shit like, yeah, if you do that, you're a hero. If you're a Jack Bauer, if you're a Liam Neeson and Taken, it's like, you're good because you get results. But in that, it was like, is this okay? Sure, he's stopping the Joker, but like, what if he wasn't? Is there anything... Is this actually like... Is he actively a protagonist? I would say that... Yeah, there's a problem in that they kind of state the answer being yeah in that, which is problematic. But um, they also, in the next movie, I feel, came back around to it. it. It sucks because they deleted the actual conversation where they pointed out everything about the Harvey Dent Act, which was what really led to the downfall of Gotham and Bane coming around. Um, as the backlash to that. But, um... Like, that's that's the thing, is that I, I would say that those elements of the third movie work well in response to the second film. The first movie is, is kind of boring because it does... It, all it does is say, like, hey, uh, you can't solve everything with money, but Thomas Wayne was a good guy, right? Like, he was a good billionaire. Like that's yeah, I don't I don't care for the first movie for those reasons. Um but I feel like by the second movie they started to actually make kind of a point. Well the point was that Christopher Nolan is a bit of a bootlegger, like Oh, uh, most assuredly. 
he gave the he kissed up to like you just said with Thomas Wayne. This was a good billionaire. You shouldn't be mad at billionaires. You should be mad at bad people. And then the rest of the thing is about that good billionaire's fascist son and his immoral crusade against the poor. Mm -hmm. And he's treated in the end as the hero. By in the end of those that series, Batman is without a doubt the good guy and the hero, and gets a happy ending with Selina. And that is the problem. Like that's why those movies are awful. Like well, period. you can't you can't discount an entire film for the the actual conclusion to the entire series. Like yes, that is a poor conclusion. But that does not discount the fact that the the rest of the series was entertaining, and it was actually a satisfying, like, series. I am not one of those that believes the journey is more important than the destination. Sorry. That's just one you're not going to be able to change my mind on. I just, well, but then what is the point of the journey at all? If not, if not to carry you along to there... And whether or not the conclusion is good, like you can't discount ninety percent. You can't discount ninety nine percent of the the series because the ending does not come to a good conclusion. I agree. I feel like there were much better ways to conclude that that would have shown that uh, that Bruce Wayne is not a hero in any way. And one of the things would have been to k put that line back in the one that they cut from uh, Jonathan Crane when they were trying all of the politicians of Gotham. As a story writer, I look at each story as a formula, as an equation, as a solvable math problem. If your story is A plus B plus C, equals D, then you did something right. So the destination absolutely matters because if it doesn't fit with your A plus B plus C, then you've done something wrong. In my opinion, that's how stories work. You, you can have an amazing, you know, call to action, rising action, etc., but if your fucking conclusion and climax fail to deliver on that, then you have made a bad story. Period. It's Stephen King. Stephen King is really good at building that tension and then fucking it up at the finish line. That's why I don't like Stephen King. I like him as a person. I like when people adapt his stuff and fix the endings. I do not like his books. Mm. Because he has a bad habit of... And... The monster was actually a dog with rabies the well, whole time. Like, I don't like that. Well, no, that's... So what? If the well, destination it, that's, that's a bad example of that, because Cujo is probably the, one of the most formulaic, like, cut-and-dry stories that he ever wrote. Like, that's well, the one that reads the most example. like a very straightforward screenplay. Yes, but I'm just using that as an example. Um, well, it's not, it's not a very good example for thinner, what you're trying to say. Thinner. We'll go with thinner, then. Okay. Where... The ending was, oh, everyone you care about is dead now. Haha, ha, that's what you get. Like, I don't, I don't find those stories entertaining. Like, well, that's that's cla that's poetic justice. That's a classic storytelling trope of this guy thought he could get away with it when in reality the whole time he was unjust and did not deserve to get away with it. Despite being the protagonist of the story, he was a bad fucking person. And yes. while he thought he finally found this loophole, it, he fucked it up. Yes. I think the movie did handle it better. I but. actually... Have I seen the... I, I remember watching the first half of the movie, but the book stuck with me much harder. Um, but, like, that's my point. Like, Or the Langoliers, or, you know, just... The Langoliers just... That's the thing, is that uh, a lot of his books, you can tell, were written on a massive cocaine binge... Oh, yeah. Where he yeah, just yeah. he he just kept going and going and going and there are neat ideas, but there's not really a conclusion. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Like, if 
for me, because I'm a writer, because I'm a storyteller, the destination is an important part. It is the most important part, because if your destination doesn't pay off the journey, why are we here? Like, if, if I'm, for instance, you take me on a road trip, right? And we go for hours. We, we cross multiple state lines. We stay in hotels because we travel so long. And when we get there, it's a fucking Walmart. That journey was not worth it. No matter what happens on that journey. If it's just Walmart at the end, why did I go on this journey? I... Uh, you have to go talk to the DJ again and get a boombox. I... Oh no, you're doing the that's right not, thing. That's not Boom a good analogy. Like... That that discounts every road trip ever. Because rarely, if ever, is the road trip uh, I, worth... I apologize, you're doing the right thing. You yeah. Boombox rarely, you if ever, this. is the... the the road trip about the destination is almost always about the journey itself. Tell that to every child who wants to go to Disneyland and has to sit in the back of their parents' uh, minivan for five hours watching Spongebob DVDs on a laptop. I don't give a shit they about don't give kids. A shit. Kids are stupid. If we're judging it by what a kid is going to care about, then why even bother making anything at all? I'm just saying... If I take you on a cross-country road trip and the end result is just Walmart, you're going to be disappointed. No, I'm not. Because I had, I, I'm going to be disappointed if the road trip fucking sucked, if th along the way nothing of interest happened, but that's so unlikely. It's If I'm spending that long with someone, I'm going to have so many stories of that at least week or so that we like were driving together conversations we had like i'll be recounting some of those conversations for years to come i'm still talking about road trips i've taken with my my dad and brothers over like the last few years like that's not how it works and in fact i would say some movies that have pr like uh, that have um pretty bad endings i still go back to and watch over and over again because there's so many moments that are worth the while and I don't have to worry about whether or not the, the conclusion was necessarily satisfying. In some cases, that's not even the point. Like in Inception, where the point is not to be satisfied, it's specifically to frustrate you so that you engage more with the artwork. What are these pants? Sorry. Some of these have pants, some of these have like hourglasses. The none of that code. matters until you get the boom box. Oh, okay. Um, see, that's where you and I just happen to differ because if I'm going on a road trip, unless I'm driving, I I have something to occupy me: a book, a video game. I don't care who's in the car with me. I am entertaining myself. Otherwise, as somebody who does most of his driving alone, and has done much interstate driving on his own road trip the trip does not fucking matter to me it's just a means to an end and that end better fucking matter like i have done more driving on my own listening to a podcast or a book and if you ask me hey andrew you, you know this book yeah where did you read it like i don't know probably in my bedroom no you actually read it on a road trip i wouldn't fucking know for all I know, I, I have no idea when I heard a book or read a book. And if I'm on a road trip and someone else is doing the driving, I'm going to be reading a comic book or looking at stuff on my tablet or playing a video game. Because the road trip does not matter to me. It's, it's not important. It's just not. Well, it never will be. I gotta be honest, man. This sounds like a philosophy that will lead to a lot of shitty stories. Like, every, almost every story that I've ever enjoyed does not have, like, is not based around conclusions, is not based around any kind of formula or anything like that. All of my favorite stories are ones that are, are open to interpretation, that have big, like, that have, uh, like, so many moments and so many things that happen along the way that, like, yeah, I might be upset that the, the ending does not 
satisfy me, but that's not gonna mean that the rest of the movie is just fucking shit because the one part was bad. Like, I... I it, so it just seems like such a side, it seems so like such a reductive way to look at it. So Coco says, at that point, why bother with the journey at all? Just watch the end of the movie, and that's it. Yeah. The problem is, the end of the movie has to be a product of the journey. Well, so, then the journey is of utmost importance because if the journey does not support the conclusion, then right. and the conclusion does not but support the, the journey. But if the conclusion sucks, it's still not worth the fucking journey. Like, the conclusion has to be satisfying. It has to be entertaining. It has to have been worth my time and effort. Because if I get to the end of your story and it sucks, you wasted two hours of my goddamn life. If I get to the end of your book and it sucks, no matter how good it was until it sucked, you've wasted that much of my life. Period. And that's the problem. Like, I don't, th it has I cannot, to be... I can't agree with that, man. Like, if I'm reading a book and I'm not interested the whole time, like, I'm gonna just like, put that book down. It doesn't matter how good the fucking ending is gonna be. Like, I don't, like, there are rare occasions where I will find a work that impresses me outside of just, um, outside of just the actual journey. And sometimes the conclusion will be so impressive that it will make me. Uh, see the whole in a different way, but at the same time, it's like it. There's so much more to it than just that. Like, Think about it like you're um, cooking, right? Mm -hmm. You're making barbecue, something that takes a long time to do properly. It takes hours. You get to the end, and you have the, and you wind up with creamed corn. Not worth your fucking time. You could have gotten it from a can. I that suppose, but like I've I've made pumpkin pie from scratch, and that's effectively no different than getting it from a can, which I know right. now and would not do again. But like I don't, I uh, am not disappointed by all the time I spent doing that because now I have that experience, and now I not only know that for sure, but now I have that knowledge and that memory. Did you enjoy the pie? Yes, yes, I did. Then and it was it, worth and the si simultaneously, if you had made that, it from scratch and simultaneously, crap, then you'd be upset. Simultaneously, that same year, I also made another pie that before I could have a slice, I accidentally dropped on the fucking floor, which was a tragedy, and I fucking I practically cried over because I spent fucking four hours on it. But I still have that experience of making that pie, and now I have that story of dropping the pie, which is also something that I look back on. So it's right. there's so but much that more destination was a natural result of the journey and you had an emotional connection to it. It wasn't a happy ending, but it was a ending you remember and will remember for a long time. I didn't, I never said the ending had to be good, just satisfying. No, and you definitely said good. Me, you said many times good. Well, by good I mean happy. Like, it does not have to be a happy ending, just a satisfying ending. Like, ah, this was a sad ending, but it fit, and I am satisfied with the conclusion. It's also... This character that I cared about died. It's also hard it's... to really see your conclusion, because you, as you have pointed out, you do not see symbolism, and so many endings are fully supported by symbolism that make them mean so much more than they would have without it. So if, if you do not see that then I'd have to take any of thing that you say has a bad ending with a grain of salt, because so many of the things that I think have great endings are only great because they fit within the theme so perfectly well. So... How do I... It won't let me push this or anything. Do I hit it from here? Push this. Oh, there it is. Okay. The, yeah. I tried like four times and it wasn't doing anything. So... I mean, they spelled it out for you. No, I get that, but the thing is, they say, it looks like something's dragged here. Obviously, I fucking see that, but it's like, how do I move it? Do I run up against it? Do I whack it with a hammer? Is there some hidden block I'm missing that leads to something falling down on it? Like, there's so many ways that it could be that... Just because they're telling me, like, you gotta move this thing, what is the mechanic that moves it in this scenario? 
Contextually, they have had so many different ways that you can move things in this game. He, he, there was a great philosopher. Um, give me just a second. Give me the disc. Give me the disc. Uh, mm. As I believe you will find, the great philosopher Real to Real once said, you have to move it, move it. Mm. Okay, um, here's... I think this is the last desk. Uh, something about Luigi and Mario 64. Luigi? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was like a, a rumor that you could ha find Luigi in there. No, like... Um... From what I'm reading... They actually found, like, unfinished models of Luigi. In I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked, but there was also a ton of rumors that that you could somehow find and unlock him that uh, never actually came to fruition. So there's apparently someone leaked the source code and found it, but... Hmm. Like, I, I find that hard to believe because... We've had people, like, tear apart the source code before. Yeah. Like, that's nothing new. So... Uh... Apparently there's something trending called Karen Fire. Oh. Um... Oh, it's a fire. Presumably. In California. Oh, okay. Uh, like an actual fire. I guess it's somewhere in a place called Karen. Or... Oh, okay. I'm trying to find... <sighs> Wildland Fire in Jerupa Valley, Sierra Avenue, and Karen Lane. So... There's a... Leave it to 2020 for there to be a fucking Karen fire. Fucking... Uh, oh, did you notice that John Moxley's bat was corked Wednesday night? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was... I was... Honestly, I was looking at Discord. Uh, whatever you had said last. Um, if you look at that bit. moment again, you'll see that the end of his bat had been drilled out and then filled back in and then painted over. Mm -hmm. And that is, for those of you who are not as athletically gifted and virile and buff as I am and know sports as well as I do, what you'll do is you'll take the club end of the bat and drill it out from the tip towards the handle, and then you'll stuff it with cork and then put a cap back on so it looks perfectly normal. And... You'd either paint over it or try and make it look like nothing's out of place. And the reason you would do that is it will make the ball pop farther. Mm -hmm. uh, basically like working like a rubber band inside the bat. Um, it's not hard to do, but basically aluminum bats do the same thing now. Um, essentially. So... Uh... Now this, to me, was the hardest thing, hmm. was finding all the toads, namely the ones hanging from the tape web. Oh, I feel... yeah. I, I I don't know what to do with that room. I'm doing this other shit first. Uh, you go to, the, like, it, it, it's very obvious what to do, like, after you've exhausted all other options. Mm -hmm. But it, I just felt really dumb when I figured it out. Right, um, right, right. Uh... So, basically, it's just a way to make the ball fly farther when you hit it. Right. So, I just find it funny that he wrapped his corked bat in uh, barbed wire, like... It's gonna work. Uh, mm -hmm. Ooh, let's see if Cakes with Threatening Auras has anything new up. Oh, boy. More visual God. humor. I fucking love Threatening Cakes. It's oh, 
god, no. You've seen that cake that is the pig pen mud pie thing? Where they'll make a fence of Kit Kats around it, pour a chocolate ganache over top, and put little, like, fondant pigs in the top? No, but like that, sounds, that sounds like some cutesy shit they do. It's great. It's adorable. I love it. Mm. This one is that, but with hot dogs instead of Kit Kats cut oh, in half. Oh, no. And topped with pigs. Pickle chips. Well, there's one that's is it is it chocolate frosted. or is it barbecue sauce? Uh, looks like cream cheese. Oh no. Uh, this one has three cigarettes instead of candles. It just says fuck off. Well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they shared a cake with a blessed aura. Which shows a team of rats snatching a cake in mm. an alleyway. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm a friend. I feel like this one's from a movie. Hmm. I don't, or a game, and I don't know what it's from. It's a pink cake with candles that says, Welcome Home. Um, I'm sure it precedes some fucked up thing that happens in, like, a story. Oh, it's from Coraline. Oh, yeah, okay. That's, it's hard to tell oh, from that description, God. but... There, there's a cake that looks like a depressed Furby that's been sliced in half, and it's just like, oh, wow. Mm. Happy New Year 2020. Cake is topped with powdered sugar and Happy New Year is written in raisins. Oh. I just. Raisins? Like, they're sweet and whatever, but, like, don't put them in baked goods. They just have a bad texture. I don't like biting like into something soft and then finding something, like, tough and chewy in the middle of it. That's I like unpleasant. Them. Listen. I, I love them. I love fruitcake. I love raisins in my cake. And I will do you one worse. I like uh, chocolate-covered raisins and chunky bars. I will accept that because the chocolate at least like, it, at least like complements it. But the. Do you want a hint fucking... for the tape web? Hold on, hold on. Let me try. Let me tr try a couple more things. What are your Thanks. ideas? Because you sound like you have ideas. No, not especially. I'm just gonna try and investigate this area a little more. The one with the coffins. Okay. Uh, oops, uh, here's sorry. one where the cake is actually cutely decorated. They put wrapped mini candies on it, which I'm bothered by, but okay. The, the text says you're old and have a small penis. Mm. <laughs> oh god, one that just says, did I ask to be born? No. A horribly frosted cake that looks like the frosting is dried out and cracking. It looks more like plaster than cake. It says, eat me, I am ugly. <laughs> oh, God. Somebody tried to use fondant for the first time and didn't wait for the cake to cool. Because oh, no. this looks like a Play-Doh stitch. I'm sending it on Twitter. Mm, okay. Play-Doh stitch. Um, Oh god, a couple of furries kneeling over a cake in a I'm sorry, corner what is that blue thing supposed to be? Stitch? It's supposed to be Stitch, okay. Um, I am I have to send you the furry cake. I, I, fucking... No, get out of here. It's no. not so much the furries themselves, it's the building. Oh yeah, Coco actually has a pin of that very specific thing. Because it was, um which I believe was actually like a commissioned thing by the the people in the picture. Um, so... This is the cake that I expect I will wind up getting uh, once we move to Seattle and I start going to more gay places. Mm -hmm. But this, this is how, if you want my attention, to get my attention. Let me see, let me see. Yeah. Um, Damn it, I keep forgetting to, like, equip uh, more shiny boots. I have them. 
Just keep. God, why do so many of these cakes have cracked frosting? What are y'all doing that your frosting is cracking? I've I've made cakes that were days old and never have I seen frosting crack until I saw these damn cakes. What maybe, are y'all doing? Maybe storing it in like a fridge? I don't know. Some Even like then. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That's So this is a wedding cake, and I'm putting that in heavy air quotes. Topped with a Joker and Harley Quinn Funko Pop. Oh no. Oh yeah. Please no. Oh yeah. Here is a Matrix cake that says there is no cake. Dot, I, need, dot, dot. I, I desperately need people to stop pretending like the Joker and Harley Quinn is supposed to be a romantic relationship. It's, oh, it's, it's so pure not. abuse. It is pure yeah. toxicity and abuse. Yeah. Now if you want to, if you relate to Harley Quinn and you want that Harley Quinn relationship, Read her storylines with Poison Ivy. Yeah, her and Poison Ivy are much better together than the Joker and her. Um, there's a cake of a woman's ass mm. in a bathing suit bottom with a slice missing. And of course, it's chocolate cake. A. Mm. Um. Give me that flashy <laughs> hammer. Or, uh. Oh, what? It's like a flashy. Or. Actually, yeah, I will switch. That cake is what vanilla people mean when they say, yeah, I eat ass. <laughs> yeah. Cupcake cakes, by the way, are my own personal hell. Like, I think they're the, I think they're worse than the worst cake decorated. Now, what do you mean by cupcake cake? Where they take a pile of cupcakes and arrange them in an interesting pattern. Or attempt to, and then frost them as an image. No, I think... yeah, that sounds awful. Uh, I'll send you one. Mm. Uh, here's what's the name of that fucking B from B movie that Jerry Seinfeld played? B Barry B Benson. Yeah, so here's one of Barry B Benson, made of cupcakes. Oh lord! I think these are worse than anything else. Like. I would rather you give me that stitch cake oh, Lord, than this thick. very Benson. Oh, he's thick. But I would rather have it, the worst decorated fucking cake in the world than that. Mm. But I, because that to me is just, not only is it bad, like decorating, in my opinion. And that's purely subjective. But it's also the laziest decorating, like, uh, mm. in my opinion. Actually, I mean, subjecti I'm be honest, subjectivity I like and objectivity, like, I yeah, I'm not saying any of this is objectively correct. I'm just saying subjectively. My but what opinion, I mean is like, it's worse. I there are objective elements. I don't know the the whole idea of subjectivity and objectivity is ironically super subjective because it's basically comes down to your philosophy of what art is and what is considered objectively appealing in things part of oh, it I'm is just trends like there's so many things that are uh, that uh we like uh, just look at like um trends in fashion like there are things that 20 years ago we found objectively appealing that nowadays we think look awful I will be very. I want to be very clear here. I do think that the Barry B. Benson cupcake cake is art, and that it is better than anything I could make. Full stop. Mm, I think you could do That's a little a, better. I have at least that much faith in you. Um, I can do pies and I can bake cakes. I cannot decorate a cake to save my life. Um. That said, like I, like I say, um, it is definitely art, in my opinion. I think that is perfectly fair to say. I also think that it is worse art than if you tried to bake. Because in my mind, for some reason, I don't imagine they baked those cupcakes themselves. I believe those are pre-bought cupcakes, and then they are... Uh, decorated at home. Right. And that being the case, I think that I would rather see 
someone try to bake their own cake and then make an ugly one, then half-ass it and just decorate someone else's work. Right. Like, if you're a child, that's one thing. If you're like a little kid and you can't bake for yourself, fine. That's a cute way to practice doing cake decorations as a kid. Perfectly acceptable. If you're an adult who doesn't have time to bake a cake and carve it and all that, that is also fine. That is understandable. But I am not going to hold you to the same standard as the person who did bake, you know, a stack of cakes, carve them, and attempted an ugly I just, I don't get what the point cake. would be, because, like, it's more work to make cupcakes. And, like... Well, my guessing is, again, that they're pre-bought, but undecorated. And that they're, de like, they go to a bakery, like, can I get a bunch of unfrosted cupcakes? And then they decorate them themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose, I don't know, at that point, yeah, you should just get your own cake. Like, you should just buy a cake. Um, so here's somebody uh, on Facebook posting, anyone with extra ammo looking to snipe some BLM events, help the police out with a god in the tower, anyone? And then they got reported for that and complained, saying, apparently people are looking to put a bullet in my head because I had the audacity to have a different opinion. What? How's that democracy thing working out for you? What? You were saying that you were going to fucking murder people, my man. That's not a difference of opinion. That's a threat of murder. Even my children yell about me about my open freedom. I try to teach them so much, even they don't understand. It is all lost now. My ex-wife left me on this. Everyone has left me on this. We are alone. At a certain Bro, point... You, you threaten to murder people. At a That's certain a point, you got to look at it and be like, maybe I am the wrong one if I'm the only one in my entire life who believes this. Maybe uh, I'm the fucking idiot. You can tell which one the toads are in because the when you pass I'm just doing. Them, I'm just doing all of them. I don't give a shit. Um, There's like other stuff in here too, so... I mean, what good is a democracy if you can't make death threats on Facebook without someone yelling at you, according mm -hmm. as uh, at Minion Death Cult points out? <laughs> if I tell a joke and I it's my joke, I that it'll just be me talking. If it's someone else's joke, I will always attempt if I think about it to credit them. So, I mean, uh, at the very was... least, yeah, I'll credit them if I can remember who did it. If not, I will generally say that it wasn't my joke. And well, that's usually when it's right like a them, meme so. that there's no way to accredit. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I'm looking right at their name as I do it, then that's pretty good. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm getting one of those promoted things. 50 trashy people we can't believe exist in this world. And it's like one of those... The website is shareably.net. Mm -hmm. And it's really tempting to click on it because the first picture is somebody showing off their stomach tattoo with their pants unzipped so that they can show off said stomach tattoo. Mm -hmm. And the tattoo says, Slut Puppet. Oh. And I, in, in the Bewitched font from the classic sitcom. Oh. And I'm just like, I desperately want to see the rest of these pictures. I, I'll send them. Uh, I'll, I don't want to send the link, so I will take a oh screenshot. Oh, my I think start. this might be the... I, th I just realized, I don't think this Paper Mario game features an 8-bit scene. Uh... Coco, am I wrong? Uh, Coco, you've played more of it than I have at this point. Is there an 8-bit scene that I didn't... Well, you've played as much of it, but also more in some places. I uh, Probably more, because Coco is like, gone on to nearly 100% it at this point. I mean, I've finished the game, but I did not 100% find the Toads because of the clam thing, which fucking had me livid. Uh, Coco, is there an 8-bit scene in here that I either A, don't remember, or... Did not find. Mm. 
wait for the delay. Coco, uh, the what you do with that white ball after drinking mozzarella thing? Uh, that's fucking disgusting. Oh, God. Ew. Ugh. Um... Also, what you do with that white ball is hope that it can call 911 because you just drank so much fucking sodium. Yeah, absolutely. God damn it. Ah, the fucking Elgato audio. Hold on. It only takes half a second to fix, but god damn it. It's so annoying. Elgato. Um, happy birthday to the image that changed the course of my life. <laughs> Someone recreated a scene from Spongebob. And I have to share it with y'all. Mm -hmm. Um. Get on the get on the dance floors, guys. Dance. I love whoever edited a Sesame Street image to say don't ever trust cops. Don't don't do it. Oh. Oh. Hey, uh, not that it's a milestone or anything, but we currently have 333 views while we have three viewers, and I find that delightful. Woo! No! I feel like we've got more viewers than that. I don't know. There's three that the app are telling me about, at least. And in I the, see. In one, the stream, two, three. In the stream summary that I get emailed every time, it's accurate to whatever this is saying. So, that's the one that I so, care about. What I'm seeing for users in chat is seven, not counting you and myself. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it only says three for this and for the stream summary, but for some reason it's only counting three people. Maybe because it only counts people who are actually signed in. Maybe? Because they're the only ones but, who can chat. But no, wait, but then how would then, they be in chat? I don't fucking know. I don't get it. Yeah. Twitch, explain. Explain, Twitch, please. Please. Yeah. I want to understand your platform because I, I enjoy providing content for it. Uh, that's um, that's a small thing, but uh, God, it irks me so much how little platforms respect their content creators, considering that they would not fucking exist if people weren't willing to uh, spend their free time and energy into providing them free work. Um... So I saw a post earlier today that brought back memories of a job I had. Mm -hmm. And the job was white folks. How often have you been the only white person at a job? Mm. And I can say with all honesty, at least one. Um, definitely one. Uh, like, in general, one different days at specific jobs probably multiple jobs yeah uh, it just depends on who was scheduled but i can definitely say that when i worked at the first family dollar in the line of family dollars i worked at i would well the second one or the third one too actually but that was a one night thing and i was on loans i don't count that but the first family dollar i worked at was in a black neighborhood and all my coworkers were black. I was the only white guy. And my the hiring manager was like, you know that, are you comfortable now? I was like, why the fuck would I not be? Mm -hmm. Like, it's fine, man. And he was like, are you sure? And I realized he was like asking, are you racist? I was like, oh, no, man, it's fine. Like, I have nothing against that at all. And he was like, okay, cool. And so he hired me, and I started working there. So, Andrew, quick, and, quick question. I'm fighting the whole punch now. Uh, should I go for the hand, or should I just hit him with a regular attack? Hit, his, hit the rubber bottom of him with regular attacks. Okay. And try not to fall in the holes. Right, I figured as much. Um, and so I, it, I was thinking about that, like, wow, yeah. It was the one time, you know... I worked at a place where I was the only white employee, period. That's, you know, crazy. And then it got me thinking about when I worked there, I remember a time a guy came in and was like, it was a 
black neighborhood, like I said. So if white people came in, there was like three white people that would come in with regularity. No, you want to hammer the bottom. Well, it's too or late now. Well, uh, wait, hammer it or hit it with like fire flowers, things like that. Right. So he, if there was like, you know, a couple of white families that would come in regularly, but for the most part, it was black and uh, Latinx families. So, um, this one time, a guy who was clearly on vacation with his family and clearly just stopped in to grab batteries, mm -hmm. stops in and he looks around very confused for a moment. And then he's like, he sees me and he sees my manager. Oh, shit. Or, well, the assistant manager who's on the clock for the day. Right. And he's like, oh, well, clearly he must be the guy in charge around here. And so he walks directly up to me and says, I assume you're the manager. And I'm standing at the cash register, ringing up a customer who just walked out when he said that, while she is off to the side signing paperwork from a delivery. Mm-hmm. But he looks at me and assumes I'm the manager, and I'm like, no, but she is. Is there something you need a manager specifically for? She can help you. And he just look of like, and you would think that he'd look embarrassed no, or um, con like something like that, or like affronted, like, oh, oops, oh, uh, you know, or like. Any kind of decency. As a fucking Instead, human being. Instead, he looked, and I'm not making this up, motherfucker looked confused. Yeah. Like, he couldn't grasp, like, what do you mean, you're not the manager? How are you not the manager? I'm like, you know, like, and he didn't say it out loud, but just the fact that this guy couldn't grasp a white guy not being in charge of the store. And instead, it's, you know, a black lady. And I'm like, mm -hmm. my friend, I'm not in charge around here. They don't even let me take, like, if I screw up a, or, you know, something with the fucking ringing up something, I have to call her over to fix it. Like, I can't just take shit off the, the order when I fuck up. I am definitely not in charge around here. Yo. He just looked so, like, baffled by this concept that, you know, what? But you're the white guy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, crazy, huh? Well, he just could not accept that. No, I'm not in charge. And I, I still think about that, like today, like how. Well, I hadn't thought about that in like ten years, because, golly. Holy shit, I just realized how long I've been friends with somebody. Um, because Maddie and I are coming up on 10 years next year. Mm hmm. Like, we'll have been together for a decade next year. And I just realized that means that I knew a friend of mine. How, hold on, I'm trying to do some math in my head. Okay. For 13 years I, now. Well. I've known my friend for 13 years. And didn't realize it. <laughs> until just now. Like, because we were talking about it earlier. And I said I've known her for 10. It's been 13 fucking years I've known her. Because it was the year... No, it's 12 years. And she has not aged a fucking day in all that time. Good for her. I hope many, many years of youth to really anyone, but certainly to whoever whoever the hell you're talking about. Well, I mean, it, so... It, 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 I just realized it because I started doing the math of when I worked at Walmart mm -hmm. and Walmart was 13 years ago because it was the year my son was born Right. and therefore I had said that 
I just realized that Maddie and I have been together for 10 years, which means that I couldn't have been, or couldn't have met my friend 10 years ago, because I had known her for years by that point. And, uh, therefore, I had to have known her for longer than 10 years. It had to have been 13 years. And so I had to sit down and like, well, fucking, I went to college, and what year? Oh, that was when I was working at Walmart. When was that? That was a couple months after Aiden was born. Okay, it was, oh god, 13 years ago. Yeah, I'm old enough to have a teenager, by the way. Mm. My kid will be a teenager in one month from now. Like, his Oof. birthday is one month from today. Let's hit him with the gold game. So if you go to the uh, Dustin Rhodes wrestling school that he's wanting to open, mm -hmm. I think he's actually opening. Uh, when you graduate, would that make you a Rhodes scholar? <laughs> I would not be shocked if he uh, if he makes some kind of claim of that on his website. Um, uh, he probably won't. Um, that was a gimmick Cody already had with Damien Sandow. Okay, so... So now do I use the hand? That he's, like, actually laid flat? Um, I think once you get his rubber butt off, then you can. Okay. And we'll just... Uh, I, I have a hard time over. remembering. Here we go. It's been so long since I did his battle. That was like day one. Let's friend. find out. Or day two. Yeah. Hit him, hit him. That's not a lot of damage, but that was something. Yeah. Um. Oh. Oh. Oh, good lord. Oh, yeah, baby. Um. Coco sent us a, a, a message. I hope you fart yourself inside out, clown. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Uh, uh. Oh! Shit. Um, okay, I'm gonna. The other one is utterly depressing and cute. Hey. Uh, hey. that. Uh, so, Quibi, how do you feel about that? Uh, uh, the platform? Yeah. Uh, I think it was kind of a stupid idea, but, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's good stuff on there. Like, they apparently got, like, really, really uh, good filmmakers to make stuff exclusively for it, so... Yeah. Like, somebody was saying that there's a thing on there that's actually really, really good but they chose to quibby it by cutting it up into smaller pieces. Well, yeah, that's the whole thing, is that each ep video is, like, 11 minutes long or something. So... Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to be designed to be seen in vertical and landscape. But it's not properly formatted for it, from what I understand. Yeah, no, it's framed horribly for uh, portrait. So when you watch that, you're missing just, like... You're just missing 60% of the action. You're not, like, getting some cool, like, ooh, avant-garde version of it. It's like, now you're just getting the shittier version. Yeah. And, like, it was really, like, dumb. Like, the more I learn about Quibi and their ideas and how they thought people would want to watch... Yeah, that's the thing is that... Some... It, it, it's like the idea is that it's to fill any kind of awkward amount of time, but it's like we already have plenty of distractions to fill those awkward amount of times. Whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, any kind of social media, like it just shows how little they understand their core demographic of people who use the internet regularly. Just that like they really they think that that's way what, the way they the want to do it. Wait, there's wait, actually, wait. I don't know if you've watched it, but there's a great uh, episode of Some More News where they talk all about Quibi and why, not only why it failed, but why it is just 
a poorly conceived concept. Yeah. Okay. I, Why it failed. I haven't watched some more news in forever. I would say the ones that aren't... I mean, they bring in politics, obviously, because politics are seeped into every aspect of our culture. But the ones like the one about Quibi, uh, the ones about how friggin' John Krasinski made uh, some good news... And then which immediately has, sold it. Yeah, like, there's two videos about that, because, I mean, it's... While not intentional, it looks like a ripoff of some more news... And really, I mean, the only reason the only reason that it succeeded is because he had so many famous friends who could do cameos and shit, and he himself is just a well-enjoyed actor. Um, uh, like, I really, really love Cody Jones. Mm -hmm. I love his content. Yes. I cannot watch some more news anymore, like... It's one thing to, like, do it and not... It's too depressing, and he doesn't leave you with any feeling of hope. He, like, you go in watching you, him. You... you say that. Some of the early ones definitely had that problem, but he has definitely gotten better at that now. I'll have to take your word for it, because I just... I get five minutes in, and I'm like, I get it. Everything sucks, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like, okay, I'm done. Because it just, if I can't get that far in without feeling like that's just all he has to say anymore. I mean, counterpoint, if you think that that's a bad move for content, then why do you do that on this stream every fucking day? Because <laughs> that's pretty much all you do when you're in the news here. Like, yeah, I just, like, if that's not what you like, then why is that what you uh, feel the need to put out into the world? I get enough of it from myself. I don't need it from others. Good point. Uh, it's like, why do I not... Um... I don't know... Um... Tell jokes, because I get enough of it from myself. <laughs> mm. Anyway. It's just like, yeah... I, I, that better not be a goddamn cake. Oh, lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's a couch. It's just a couch and something about cocaine. Okay, thank God. Right. Oh, God, am I going to have to listen to all of these guys one by one? No. Oh, thank God. Okay. They were There's really leading up like, like they were I do don't know what to say. Thanks. And then runs away, and then they all just run past. Yep, yep. That just happened. Uh, somebody got a couch with a mirrored... Uh, matching table and side tables and said please don't be surprised by my newfound cocaine addiction mm, yeah it's a good one alright we beat two bosses in this one so I'm I... not gonna lie it's a nice couch it's yeah. the exact kind of tacky I like okay um it's tacky oh god it's tacky but it's the kind of tacky oh, I it. like why is it half the time when I'm tr not trying to click a uh, to touch a notification on for Twitter, I'm getting taken there, but when I'm trying to, it's just like, nah. Oof. Oh, God. No, this is a pretty fucking ugly couch, Andrew. My only problem with it is the corner is a table instead of a seat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a little frustrating. That's one thing I'm finding with oh, the couch I got from armrest. you is that like having only the armrests on the very ends is not very convenient. Um, that's because we didn't give you the back cushions because y'all didn't take them the first time. Mm. Uh, I used those as the armrests. Oh, okay. I would like build a little fort around myself with cushions, and I, I mean, do that's like that. Fine. We got plenty. We got couch, plenty of cushions and stuff, so. We, I love we the make armrest do, on but... this couch, though, because imagine laying down on that, some bitch. Oh, that's a nice cushion. I brought the sun back. It's bright now. Ow, my eyes. I like Coco's reply to it, which is just, uh... And I'm sure it's more, like, elaborate than how I'm about to reread it, but I just like the idea that Coco read it as, ah. Uh... 
Mm. Which I know is not accurate. I've never heard Coco go, mm, fuck. Ever. In fact, uh, I've only ever Yeah, it'd be more like a say. fuck. Or fuck. Well, in that case, I'm pretty sure Coco's going with a fuck. I just like the idea of like a valley girl like, fuck. Which I still insist it is um, the best way to find something. Like if you're if something's missing, mm -hmm. the easiest way to find it is to like it won't help you find it more efficiently. You'll just feel better while you look for it. This go fucking fuck. Where where the fuck is it? Fuck. Oh my god. Fucking god. Where the fuck is that? Until you find it. Because mm -hmm. you won't get angry. You'll be constantly calming yourself down. If, and you that sounds like a bit that I'm doing. I'm dead serious. Try it. Next time you're missing your keys, or you can't find, you know, your shirt, just go- Wait, fuck. what am I supposed to do now? I wasn't- I kind of wasn't paying attention. Did you get the- I just be- I did the streamer. That's it. Okay, um, I believe there are angels among us sent down to us from somewhere up above. What? They come to you and me in our darkest hour. They teach us how to live, they teach us how to give, and guide us with the light of love. Uh-huh. Um, I genuinely don't know what you're supposed to do next. Fuck. Uh, what did Olivia brain... say? Wasn't there something we had to do in the desert? What? What did we have to do in the desert? You go back to where you put the incense cone and go down the stairs. I thought that's where I came up. No, no, no. The incense cone. Is not, not the, the turtle. No, that wasn't the same spot. Okay, uh... Shit, I am gonna car, do that, go but I, re I, I gotta take uh, one last quick biology break. Uh, unfortunately, it's only gonna be like a few minutes after that because I'm gonna end this soon. But I, I got, I uh, gotta go. It's a good, it's a good place to stop after you, you finish that and then go back to Toad Town. Okay, and that's a good place to stop. I will be, I will BRB, folks. Just one minute. I'll stay on and entertain the folks. I, I do not apologize for all of you who just got that song stuck in your head. But I do have to question this slightly um, questionable design for this logo for J-Lab headphones that Best Buy is advertising. Like, the, in and of itself, the logo's okay. It's just... Very reminiscent and looks very questionable right now. Um, I, I need uh, another opinion on this. Uh, this headphones. Uh, uh, the look, the logo specifically looks somewhat racist. Are you back, Iggy? Yeah. A quick question. Are you looking at the logo? Do you ever... What? I sent a pair of headphones to you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Just just the logo on the headphones look kind of racist to you. Uh, Twitter. The... I think those are just Raycons. No, they're, um, J-Labs, but, like, that oh, logo, yeah. like, <coughs> like, the no. logo's kinda, kinda iffy, right? It looks like any tech bullshit, although I think they specifically made it only three parts to avoid that particular comparison. I mean, right, like, mm. a, a quick question, do you ever walk into a room that is already like the light is already on and out of force of habit you flip the switch to off because like i find myself doing that every goddamn time i come back in here uh while i'm streaming i <laughs> did that to matt i do that all the time to maddie like she'll be uh 
using the bathroom or something. I'll go in to wash my hands or something. And then turn the light off on my way out. Mm -hmm. And she'll just be sat on the toilet like, Hey! And I'll be like, oh, oh, oh! Yeah. It's... Oh god, there's something like that with our house. So... Uh, the wiring in this house is totally fucked. So, um... At a certain point... Uh... Uh... Corey, like... He, like, switched out a light switch in, like, a closet on one side of the house. So that now, when you turn that closet light on, the the uh, light to the bedroom, the fan for that bedroom, and the light for the... Uh, not the nearest bathroom, but the bathroom further away from that closet, and the fan for that bathroom all go off. It's like it cuts the breaker completely. Even though it should not be in, like, the middle of a circuit or anything, because it's on the far corner of the house. So I don't know how the hell he managed that, but this... I... I... How could that even be possible? Yeah, old houses have weird fucking wiring. I... This the whole house is so, so fucked. Like, the wiring, the plumbing, all of it is just, like, the most slapdash job that could have possibly been done. <clears throat> What's going on in here? <sighs> I don't know. Oh you know god, the ice. The ice. Gail Simone is trying to troll again, but she, I, I don't think she's ever watched a uh, UHF because all she's saying is, uh, a bit from UHF. Which is? Less. Uh, her tweet simply reads, Having said that, hot dogs inside a Twinkie. Mm. If you add spray cheese, that is UHF's uh, Twinkie Wiener Sandwich, which, as we mentioned on the stream before, binging with Babish, I actually liked. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it makes sense. Like, it's not gonna be gourmet or fucking anything, but it's like, it's three pure, like, uh, comfort junk foods why wouldn't it work together it's not like the cream in Twinkies is actually like whipped cream or anything it's some kind of petroleum, petroleum byproduct yeah so it's basically just more oil yeah oh this is a good tweet white supremacy won't die until white people see it as a white issue they need to solve rather than a black issue they need to empathize with Yep. Yeah, it is a problem with white people. We are much weaker as a race because of it. Ironically, us uh, people of the white race thinking that they're fucking amazing is actually making them way less amazing. <laughs> actually, that's like pure irony. Holy shit. That's like... What was my tweet yesterday? Because I had a really good one. Oh, uh, white suppress... Or people would be like... I'm white, that makes me the superior race. Also, those same people. I can't wear a mask, it makes it hard for me to breathe. Yeah, I, I like the one that somebody on Facebook was like, only French, Italian, and American dishes are, cuisines are at all good food. And it's like, really? Have you, like, why did you, uh, why did you, like, waste all your time colonizing everywhere with spice if you don't want to use any of it? Have you never had Indian food? And he was like, uh, yeah, I've question. had, I, yeah, I've had diarrhea. And it's like, oh, really? Mr. Uh, uh, Ubermensch there uh, has a pretty weak digestive system, it sounds like. What gets me is, did they say English? What? When you said that just now, did they say English food was good cuisine? No. Cause, oh, okay, because I was going to say. God, no. Even the English don't say English food is good cuisine. Good lord, no. Hey, you know what gets me? With Boiled uh, meat is not a dish. I mean, yeah, that's pretty bad. But you know what always gets me? Is uh, the chip butty. That is, for anyone who doesn't know, a roll. Turned a sandwich roll. That just has fucking french fries in it. It's just a french fry sandwich. And even fucking Gordon Ramsay in his cooking series, like, the where he teaches you to cook, acts like that is real food. Uh, what? 
What's wrong with that? It's carbs and carbs. It's pure starch, dude. It's... Uh, no. no. I will say, you. there is one dish that is boiled meat that is not a soup or stew that is good. Mm-hmm. And I can only think of the one dish. Okay. Hold and on, despite... I gotta run back. I gotta run back in here to get this hidden block before I forget it. And despite the fact oh, God damn. that it is closely associated with Ireland, is in fact a Jewish dish. Is it has haggis? nothing to do with Ireland. And that is corned beef. Corned beef? Really? Yes, it's a Jewish dish. Irish people never made it. Um, it became a substitute dish in America for uh, Irish people looking to substitute a different dish that they didn't have here in the States. Mm, That's right. it. Um, it's a Jewish dish, in fact. And it is made by boiling meat for hours and hours. That's true, yeah. Well, it's well, simmering. But... Yeah, I would say that's more, that's closer to a braise than it is, like, a boil. I mean, it's a very low boil. Um, it's it's the for... same, like, idea of a braise. But a braise is usually done in an oven. Well, yeah, but it's, 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 I mean, what it does to the meat is yes. br effectively braising. Uh, nope, this is not where I want to be. I want to go to the, uh, the, 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 I want to go unshrivel that hot before I forget about it. A dude is arguing that asking whether certain races have bigger schlongs than other races is for good medical health. No. Rather than it just being racist. It's, uh, not only is that not important for the vast majority of cases but also uh you guys know how like you guys get that 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 average five and a half inches is across multiple races right it's not just white people and, and oh, in reality very... in reality the reason that that is such a common like stereotype of black people is because most people only see black dicks in porn and guess what? Most people in porn have huge cocks because that's why they're in it. Yeah. And uh I can tell you for a fact that not all of them are bigger. Hmm. Yeah. From Again, experience. it's like it's any any person, it's like it ranges the gambit from or the gamut from tiny to huge. It's like it's not a racial thing. Like, there are certain things, like shapes and things that might be pertaining to race, similar to how facial features, uh, hair, like, there are features that will be similar, but size is not going to be one something that's relegated to specific races. Uh, if you try to argue, well, it's because of slavery. No. Slave owners don't give a shit about the size of penises. Uh, no. Yeah. If anything, they they would probably be the type to uh, castrate men with larger penises for, out of sheer jealousy, no enslave owners. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, so yeah, you, I would once you get the chance to get on the boat. That's where I'd call it for the day. Okay, I'm gonna run uh, back in the whispering woods to rehydrate the shriveled Max. Uh, heart, and then I'm gonna run back here and save. And then uh, I'm gonna call it. You're gonna get the shriveled thing wet. Listen. I'm listening. What part of what I said was incorrect? Listen. Your, your intentions were incorrect. I didn't intend anything. I just repeated what you said. Mm-hmm. 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 You think you're so slick. I'm just saying what <laughs> you said. In fact, all I do, I took words out and shortened it. You're the one that said more. Mm -hmm. I said less. 
Ah, mm. Don't shoot the messenger. Or mm. in this case, the le the messenger, A. Eh? No. Eh, get it? Incorrect. I less? Oh. Developmental. My girlfriend started watching me play this after I finished. Mm hmm. And she saw the word developmental after I had told her about it several times. And said, Do you get it? Developmental? And she's like, Yeah, I get it. And then she saw it written down and went, Oh! Like vellum. I was like, Dear. I've told you this. And she just looked at me confused. I was like, I forgot. <laughs> I feel like it is a, a pun that is a little too clever. I feel like she just wasn't listening. <laughs> or that. I mean, I wouldn't either. Yeah, uh, you only listen to yourself because you gotta. There's no way to drown it out from the inside. Believe me, I've tried. Nothing right. works. Not str oh, by the way, uh, <coughs> update on Flaming Carrot. Oh, yeah. Eh, just not into it. No. That's not it, so much an update, that's kind of the same thing you already said. Yeah, but I've read more of it, I'm still not into it. Like, uh, it, I get what it's going for. I get, but it's just not humor I find funny. Mmm. So it's a lot of things like... So if you've read... Uh, uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Yeah. Do you remember the issue where he goes to heaven and hell? Oh god, and it's been a long time. He rants at God about like the evils of the world and says, There are women down there wearing push-up bras. Fathers abandoning their kids. Powdered eggs. Right. Imagine if, like, that was not coherent, but the exact same dialogue. And it never made sense. Would it, in what way? Uh. Coco says the Velamental thing would have been funnier if she knew what, or if they knew what Velum was beforehand. Um, yeah. Um, but like, I'm trying to think of an example, but like, in one bit he talks about how I am a hero, a champion of justice, a crusader of right, a mean cha-cha dancer, and mm -hmm. then like, but it's always lines like that, but they don't all, like, they they're not that coherent. Like I I'll have to find an example and like send okay. it to you. God, but running back through these areas now, it's like especially so much smaller. It's, oh, it, well, it's not even that it's smaller. It's the save points. Like there was a point on Autumn Mountain that I pointed out to Coco. It's like seeing, being able to see two save blocks on the same screen compared to what was the in the original where there'd be like two save blocks and an entire fucking like dungeon is wild like there's so much like more generous with them now yeah but you kind of feel like you need them sometimes and then you don't i think they're more uh what's the word i'm looking for encouragement than necessary. I mean, yeah, but it's also like, it's so simple, it only takes half a second that, like, there's no reason not to hit them. Yeah. They're a lot quicker than in previous games. Yeah, where it'd be like, do you want to overwrite this save file? Are you sure? Okay. I'm just telling you. I ya. guess I'll overwrite it for you this time, but next time you'll have to overwrite it yourself, young man. Like, yeah, I would call that a good spot to stop for the night. Okay. So, with that in mind, thank you to everybody watching, whether you watched in the past, the present, or the future with the past broadcast tabs, or the uh, 
YouTube archive channel, which you can find down below the stream on the browser version, along with my personal YouTube, where I will be putting out some things soon. I have them written. I'm still in the editing process on the writing. And the editing is going to take quite a while. I got to get a lot of footage together, but I uh, am working on stuff. You can also find my Twitter at IggyDKid, which is where I tweet out when I go live. And if you haven't, please consider following. It's free for you, and it helps the channel out a great deal. Got to get to those 50 for affiliate. And once we hit affiliate, who knows what lengths we can go to. But with all of that in mind, thank you all very much for watching. And Andrew, do you have any last words? It still would take a trillion years to get to the nearest inhabitable planet at the fastest speeds possible. Quit thinking that any time in our lifetime or our grandkids' lifetime will be living on a planet other than Earth for an extended period of time that would make a difference in the lives of those living there other than as a last destination tourist spot. Mars will be the coldest, saddest fucking uh, nursing home you've ever lived in. Period. What we need, what we need is to turn the moon and the Earth into some form of trebuchet. Because once you can launch with a, with a planetary trebuchet, I think you can those launch speeds. people out of Earth's orbit forever and never have to deal with them again. In fact, you know what? We should be encouraging people to go to Mars, like Rush Limbaugh and Elon Musk and all the other billionaires. Let them fucking leave. Yeah. Let them go. Fuck yeah. Please go to Mars. Please. We'll never have to worry about y'all's asses again. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we made your lives a little better. Thanks for letting us into your home on your phone on your computer, on your tablet, wherever it was. Good night, everybody.